The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir! Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022, and this sports show shall begin right now. Yeah. There's a new owner in the NFL from the Walmart family making two out of the top three wealthiest owners in the NFL being related to the Walton that started the Walmart Congrats to that family. Yeah, unbelievable. A lot of money. I guess there's a kid, a daughter, a whole thing. I mean, mm, that money is just going to go. Mm-hmm. You know, their money don't jingle. It, it folds. folds. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. It very thick, by mm-hmm. the way. Those folds are very, very yeah, thick. Yeah. Congrats yeah. to them. New owner and uh, new ownership in Denver should bring a nice spark of freshness to the league. What will the new richest owner in the NFL, Mr. Robson Walton, do with the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson as his quarterback out there in the Mile High City with an incredible fan base? Going to want to make a splash. Going to want to make investments. I like this for the NFL. Any new money in the NFL is good money in the NFL. Any new minds and positions of power in the NFL, good minds for the position of the NFL. I love what happened here for Denver, and congrats to all parties involved. Uh, there's a new report coming out from the New York Times about Deshaun Watson. This dude's a predator. So it's Holy good. shit. Not good. I mean, shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Not the good. More and more and more and more and more and more and more that continues to come out. And it seems like if there were 66 women, allegedly, via the New York Times uh, reporting, an investigation. 66 women massaged Deshaun Watson in 17 months. That's 3.87 massage women a month. Yep. There's about four weeks in every single month. That's one per week for 17 straight months. How old is he? We don't know. How long has he been in the NFL? I guess we can figure that out. That's only a 17-month period. What else is going on? The stories all seem to be... Pretty similar. So this would be quite a rouge if mm-hmm. everybody was lying. The NFL has quite a predicament here on their hands. Yeah. A couple of them. Uh, the, are the Cleveland Browns going to be able to get out of the deal? Are the Cleveland Browns going to be able to avoid any of the guaranteed money that is $230 million? We don't know. We'll talk to Andrew Brandt in the second hour okay. of this show today on Wednesday, June 8th, because he has been there, done that with contract negotiations, know the, knows the ins and outs. He's been an agent, and he's been front office for the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. I think he'll have a little bit more clarity on that whole situation, plus the Aaron Donald deal, how mm-hmm. the salary cap mm-hmm. gets kind of manipulated and worked. Plus, I believe he has good intel on the Walton family coming into Denver and what that means. Can't wait to chat with friend of the show, Andrew Brandt. We'll have uh, Billy Ho joining us in 15 minutes. The man that blocked Ty Schmidt in 2017. Just won the memorial this past weekend for the PGA. We'll chat with him about his golf game, how he's feeling. And the state of golf as a whole. Uh Uh-oh. A lot of people tweeting their... Dismay sure. about this live golf thing. Mm-hmm. Probably from their iPhones. Sure. Wearing Nike shoes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just got done putting gas in their car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drinking Starbucks, which has, you know, the largest all over. shareholder, okay, for Twitter is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh huh. We found that out when Elon was going to go buy Twitter and they came out and said, we do not <laughs> accept the deal and it was like wait a minute saudi arabia owns twitter well they're the longest and the largest shareholder of twitter so the people that are tweeting about how bad they hate all the golfers that are taking the 100 million the 200 million the 50 million 60 million they're doing it on basically a saudi platform but we pick and choose what we're pissed off about, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The irony is not lost there. We hope everybody does the right thing all the time. Mm-hmm. We hope everybody lives in a perfect society because that's what we would like to live in. We will continue to push and strive for that. But I think the reality is 
the hypocrisy seems to be showing its head everywhere right now in this thing because the players are benefiting from it as opposed to businesses or leagues benefiting from it. And there's some people that maybe are in direct uh, relationship with the PGA and CBS yeah. and everybody there. They're coming out super strong against it. And literally one of them I saw had a Nike cap on who did an entire special about how great it was Nike came into golf with Tiger Woods. But I wear Nikes, love Nikes. Hey, sure. listen. Who doesn't? Love Nikes. Love everything about them. But I believe if you snoop around into that and basically every other conglomerate of a company, you're going to find some money. If we're going to start looking into venture capitalists and where the money's coming from, and where money, I think a lot of people are going to start having to, to cancel every company that's yeah, on earth that has ever man. taken money from anywhere. Absolutely. It's very fascinating to watch this all happen. And the fact that people are tweeting about it when we just found out that Twitter's largest shareholder, I mean, that is just... Yeah. Anyways, we'll talk to Billy Ho in about <laughs> 15 minutes about it all. I can't wait to chat with his win at the Memorial. This is a pivotal time in the history of golf. How does Billy Ho feel about that? And in the future, can't wait to chat with him. Phil Mickelson will be playing in the U.S. Open. Yeah, that's right. And I'll, yeah, I'll be playing in the U.S. Open and also all these other tournaments as well. Dustin Johnson says, oh, I'll be playing in the U.S. Open as well, but I'm not playing in any of the other tournaments. This is fascinating. I have no idea how the PGA has been able to do this for so long. It felt like after learning about how the whole operation is run with the PGA that it was ripe for a picking almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have an endless supply of money, that's only becoming more and more because more countries are having to go to you for the oil. Because in the past, actually, the oil money was going straight to Russia, but now it's going to. So is that, I mean, Can't how, where do we start? Are we all walking and riding bikes now? <laughs> yeah. Depends where you draw the line. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Ah, I hate it. I had about 50 drafts of tweets that were almost went out this morning, and I did not want to dive into it completely because I understand why people are upset. I completely understand why people are upset because we all have this fantasy that we would like to live in a world that is just kumbaya and harmonic and everybody's made right decisions through our entire being. I wish for that to happen one day. I hope if I ever get lucky enough to have kids, they get to grow up in a world where everybody has the best intentions in mind. But that's just not how it is and how it has been for a long time in our world. And if we are just going to start snooping around to the beginnings of everything where money is coming from, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed in a lot of places. Don't know how to say that any other way, but I think that's a very real thing. This is not me going to bat for live golf and for all these guys. I'm just saying it's interesting how people pick and choose the hypocrisy of it seems to be running rampant in this thing. The toxic table at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Ty, you wanted to say something? Well, to yeah, no, I just think if like, you know, you can play the morality stuff too, but like if we'll see where these guys would be at if if that league reached out to them and was like, hey, you know, will you come cover our league for $2 million? Like, if all of a sudden it's just like, you know, because a lot of them are saying it's just a bunch of rich players dealing with rich guys, getting more rich. Like, they don't care about anything else. It's like... But the reason why you're standing on that is because your paycheck's coming from somebody that has a deal. Exactly. So you are literally doing that on a moral uh, compass of... Well, that's where my paycheck is coming from. So it's hard for you to grandstand on other people's money when you're only doing that strictly because of your money. And you're doing that on a platform, by the way, that is... Kind of all in the same pot. Largely yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it is insanity. It's a crazy time in the sports world. At Boston, Connor, uh, Celtics are dead. Yeah, Anyways, Anton Diggs, that. your thoughts, pal? Am I allowed to fall somewhere in the middle where I think this league is going to stink because they have like five players in the top 100, but I also don't care if anyone goes and plays there? Huh? Did you watch the match? Yeah. I don't think it matters. What do you mean? Like, I don't think it matters if you have five good players and then 30 bad players. You still have a potential dark horse that can come through the ranks. You're going to have the big players that are going to carry it. This is just like stacking a card for a fight night or anything like that. Big names carry the glitz, the glamour, the highlights, the headlines, and everything like that. And then you hope, like, a middle, a middle guy or a bottom run guy can go on a run, then the story is good. I think people watch golf just to watch. I watched the match. Was that great golf? Big names? Big names. Big names for sure. Big huge names. names. Much bigger names than they have. Really? Yeah. Phil Mickelson, huge name. Yeah, but yeah. he's like 55, 60. Won the PGA Championship last year. Huge name in golf, though. Obviously, with what he turned some people off. Dustin Johnson. Huge name. Mm -hmm. Huge Agreed. name. Phil DJ a big name. Golf yeah, I think ball, it was, whacker guy. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau, huge name, right? I mean, he was the needle mover for the PGA mm -hmm. for a long time. I don't know... If I'm 100% on board with like, well, because they don't have the good enough names that it's going to work all the way through the entire roster, because this is just the beginning. Yeah. Once guys go to the open, and if guys are playing at the open, and 
I think the morning men, Nick told me this morning, they were chatting about the live guys basically being NWO, mm -hmm. kind of walking <laughs> into WCW through the crowd whenever they show up at the open. And at the end of the NWO run, I don't know if everybody is, they had 100 people in it because everybody yeah. wanted to join the NWO. Yeah. The New World Order, who were founded by the outsiders, became the insiders. That's just kind of how counterculture kind of happened at the time. That is only, I feel like, unless the PGA Tour mm -hmm. can have an answer, I don't know how money doesn't win in the end for people that are trying to be professional with something. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah I, they need, sorry, Connor. No, they no. they need to because I think to like Tone's point, like if a bunch of these guys do start going over, then it's it's a no brainer. But like just having DJ some of these big names, like I don't know if watching golf's fun, but competitive golf, like if a lot of these guys are staying on the PGA, like those events are still going to be better. And they're already kind of a step ahead because they have CBS and stuff like that. Because, like, I assume you look at this, it's like, hopefully it'll be competitive. But also it's like, oh, DJ could win this by eight shots. Yeah, he could. What if he doesn't? What if DJ doesn't play well because he has $125 million? They said That's They possible. said that Phil and Dustin were very relaxed when they were on the range. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> Every single swing isn't living and dying upon their family having money and hour of success this weekend. Not that Dustin and Phil were ever in need of cash. Well, Phil, but it's a lot yeah. different game. Well, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> True. Phil might need a few bucks. Still going to gamble on, of course. What yeah. the fuck are we talking Come on. about? 1-800-GAMBLER.COM yeah. in case you have any gambling problems. That's right. Thank you, Tom. Or not.com just the number yeah well, I, I think you could try to put in dot com <laughs> uh -huh. but it'll already go through <laughs> um anyways that is this is a fascinating development it really is it is a very fascinating development especially with what you heard dana say yesterday where he said everybody's trying to get into sports right Correct. now because sports is like this we're very lucky to be in sports there's a tweet that has all the numbers of how much every team has kind of gone for and over the last few years prices have just gone way up spotrack put it out recent u.s sports teams purchases the broncos just sold for 4.65 billion which by the way in this room we thought was low bargain low. we thought it'd be a lot more yeah and that's because we live in the future that's yeah, right true don't we we are yeah. forward thinking mm -hmm. future thinking 2026 five six years from now that 4.65 billion is going to sound like an absolute dream as apple gets in and mm -hmm. netflix maybe gets in the live stream i mm -hmm. mean there is a lot of people that are going to try to get in the nfl the panthers carolina panthers david tepper just uh four years ago 2.2 billion that's in carolina they were kind of in a irrelevant time period at that point yeah. mm -hmm. it was after the cam newton run 2.2 billion dollars to be in charlotte north carolina the queen city Great deal, I think, for Tepper. Tepper yeah. viewed it that way. He actually filed bankruptcy um, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a billionaire's move from what yeah. we have learned. Mm -hmm. If you study business throughout the history, the billionaires remain billionaires because they start little um, side companies or LLCs to handle things. And then if they get fucked over by the city, for instance, oh, well, that has obviously made no money. Bankruptcy, we're not See, paying anybody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about it. Yeah, we're over here still. Yeah, this, I'm still the second wealthiest man in the NFL, yeah. But that particular that company has bankrupt. no money. Yeah. Sorry about it. Sorry. You're going to have to ask them. But them is you. No, no, no. You no that's, that's them. They're out of business now. <laughs> Who ran that business? Well, I did. But it's there was other people in there, too. And they're, they Sorry work here it. now. They don't yeah. work there. They screwed it up. Good luck. It's fucking crazy that that happens. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? It's crazy that people code. don't hold up their end of the bargain when you're working with the guy well, who's trying to help your city. I concur completely, and that would be what he says. But let's just take this particular example where the city stopped paying their side of it, yeah. and they were building a whole new Panthers thing, and the whole thing was happening, and whatever the case is. We don't know the ins and outs of that entire agreement, but Tepper felt like he was kind of jaded and fucked by the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. Him filing bankruptcy for that and then not having to pay anybody – is a wild move for the second wealthiest person in the NFL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think morally people look at that and go, that's a wild move. Follow up though, business wise, that has been used since the beginning of time yes. by all the people that are very successful. How do you think he accrued that money? Doing stuff like that. And it's what we're saying, by the way. We don't like that this happens. No. This shouldn't happen. We hope that there is a time in our existence that it's not happening, right. but that is happening, and that's the reality of the actual world that we live in. We don't yeah. want to have to do that again. We don't have to ever no. do this again. We don't ever, ever talk about this again, and I, I hate that this is the avenue, and we have to be the people that tell people this, but mm -hmm. like the thoughts that we have about the world, and maybe on Twitter, when you get retweeted by people about what the world should be, we all agree that it should be. But it's just not the case. Mm -hmm. Just not in some places, that's not the case. Wish it was. That's why I feel like everybody should travel. If you get mm -hmm. the opportunity, not that everybody has the opportunity, but if you get the opportunity to travel to other cultures in other countries and you get a chance to look around and then you 
you actually get to experience a place that people have told you what it is like and how like, well, over in blah, 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 they have blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, what about the ripple effects of everything that has happened too, where these people are just living in garbage bags for, mm -hmm. I don't know, like 30 miles straight. And then you see what you're told to see. It's like, it's just, uh, I think everybody's visions of what the world is are good and good intentions and has everybody like feeling like that's what we're trying to get to. But the actuality is that there's bad people who do bad things to people on a regular basis. People get fucked over. It's not cool. People that don't deserve opportunities get opportunities because of who they know. We hope that that changes in the future. People that have been very... Um, willing and able to do a job, have not gotten a job because they've been fucked over before. That's still happening. That'll continue to happen. But we hope to live in a world where none of that happens. Yeah, that'd be great. Exactly. That'd be great. But mm -hmm. that's the reality of the world we live in. Shit happens. Yeah. Let's go back to this, though. Um, but the bill was $1.4 billion in two, 2014. They were trying Man. to sell that for like a couple years. Remember, John Bon Jovi almost yeah. got in there. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then Bill Belichick said, you're going to buy in the AFC East. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Mets, $2.4 billion in 2020. 2019, the Royals went for $1 billion. I think Patrick Mahomes is a part of that purchase. Mm -hmm. And then the Marlins, $1.2 billion. Jazz, $1.6. Nets, $2.3. Rockets, $2.2. And then hockey's just dead in the water. <laughs> well, so, Track conveniently left the Penguins off this list, which is sold for nine hundred million. So, I mean, it's it's not on that level, but it's close. Yeah, I mean, it's a league that has a bunch of players and they have a deal with both ESPN and Turner and team sold for less than a billion dollars. But that's part of NHL's problem is they don't market Nasty. it big enough to get those yeah. teams bigger. But all these numbers are going to go up and up. So even though Walton. Uh, spent the most amount of money for any franchise in the history. He's not the last one. If the commanders go up for sale, that's going to be fucking gigantic. Huge. Yeah. All these numbers are just going to continue to go up, and this becomes, in sports, owning a sports franchise or a sports league has become the, like, mega rich dude mm -hmm. thing. Now. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I want to. I want to. Mm -hmm. I want His excellency, I think, is how he goes. The uh, Saudi Arabian prince. Sure. Right? Makes sense. That's amazing, by the way. What do you want to be called? Your Highness? No. Uh, Excellency. Excellency, I think. Yeah. What, do I, uh, what do I exude? Yeah. <laughs> what do I exude? You want your greatness? Mm. Well, I am great. Mm. No. Hold on. Your goodness? Well, that's like uh, a baker little, or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Excellent. I'm excellent, Anna. We're excellent. We're all excellent? Yeah. I would like to be called... Your Excellency. Okay. That's how they actually tight his actual title is like <laughs> His Excellency, a blah 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 blah. He's oh, I want a fucking sports league. Which one? Well, it looks like the PGA doesn't pay anybody. Give me the fucking golf. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do the golf. Yeah. It's wild the time that we're in, but money is dumping into sports at a different level than it ever has in the past. Tone Diggs, go ahead. You'll never guess who I think came up with Excellency. Um, the definition is a title given to certain high officials of state, especially ambassadors, or of the Roman Catholic Church. Hmm. I love that. Who in the Roman Catholic was called that? Just some priest who was better than everybody else? Call me the excellency. Yeah, That's probably. a fucking good C. I'm the excellency. I'm your excellency now. Hey, welcome to my service. This is the excellency. Last week was the good C. <laughs> Two weeks ago was the below average C. Mm -hmm. Now you got the excellencies. Wait till you hear how I dissect this book that's been around for a long time. <laughs> and the FIFA president is also called his excellency. Uh, of oh, course. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. of course. That makes sense. Interesting. So I've been having, uh, uh, with the Thunderdome, coming to be and like contracts and agreements after I my name and then title and I just put like founder chief mm -hmm. boss head head head. I just change it every single time I, it might your excellency yeah. <laughs> you're welcome one. Uh, Tone Diggs before we dive into our guest here I'm super excited to chat about an absolute champion on the golf course especially in Dublin Ohio this past weekend right now there's $50,000 in free bets available uh, or up for grabs with FanDuel Sportsbook's PMI Long Ball Bonanza, mm -hmm. where you have to place a same game parlay on one of the baseball games that is happening today. Mm -hmm. Has to happen today. He or she who hits the same game parlay or same game parlay plus, uh, which means you bet two on one game and then on another game, same game parlay plus, he who has the long he or she who has the longest odds wins $50,000 in free bets on FanDuel Sportsbook. And then there's another 50000 in free bets to the next, like, 10 people that get up there. Uh, Tone Diggs, will you help explain that a little bit before we get into our guests? Yes, and if I can't explain it and you don't understand it, uh, Connor actually did a really good job of putting the rules out on Twitter. So thank you, Connor, to that. Uh, thank you, Connor. Um, <clears throat> so the same game, parlay, holiday, PMI, bonanza, baseball bonanza. 
Uh, Fifty thousand dollars to first place if you you have to opt in. First, you go to FanDuel Sportsbook and you opt in, and then you put a same game parlay together, which is multiple bets within the same game, or same game parlay plus, which is multiple bets within a same game and then one or two bets, whatever, from multiple games. Um, and the longest the longest odds that you put in a five dollar bet in on your on a parlay, the longest odds that win. For the day, for, for instance, instance, for today, I'm gonna win. I'm at like plus one hundred and twenty nine thousand for one okay. for the Yankees and Twins game today. If that right. hits, I'm gonna guess that you actually do probably win. Oh, it's too bad. I've won for uh, plus one hundred forty seven thousand. Yeah, that's no chance. Oh, I'm gonna hit. It's plus wow. one hundred forty thousand. That's got no chance that's of hitting. Not gonna hit. Plus one hundred twenty nine thousand is definitely hitting. Yeah. What, what? Mine's about plus fifty five thousand. Oh, I so, got a plus forty nine thousand. So the higher the, fucking the higher the fucking higher the number goes, the longer the odds. The longest odds of the day that the bet actually wins wins fifty thousand dollars in free bets on Fanduel. Now there is a way to do it where you're going plus one hundred twenty thousand. There's also a way to do it where you're going like plus 5,000 because maybe no one else's bets Because it has to hit. Yes, because it has to hit. Whoever hits and has the longest odds will win. Good luck to everybody. Come join us. I've made Opted. four same game parlay, same game parlay plus bets after opting in today on FanDuel. I have bet on no less than 15 to 16 guys I have never heard of before. Oh, yeah. Will I watch these games? No chance. But if there's 50,000 in free bets available to the winner, I'm going. Yeah, Another 50,000 to uh, the next 10, I think. Mm -hmm. We're in. Let's go enjoy it. Good for baseball. Yeah, here we go. Here we go, baseball. Here we go. Uh, joining us now is the most recent champion of the PGA Tour, a University of Florida grad. Just won the Memorial Golf Tournament. Absolute stud. Put a foot down on the rest of the field with an eagle on 15 while having the lead. The mental fortitude that that takes is next level. Don't know what the fuck was on his arm. We'll definitely ask him. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Horshaw. Yay! Hey! What's going on, man? How are we doing, guys? Having me. Hey, where are you out there deep sea? Are you uh, lake? Where are you at right now? No, I'm just uh, a coastal around St. Bonavigia. Hold on, we gotta call you back. We gotta call you back. We're losing you on connection there. Let's call you back. Let's call Billy right back there. He, that's a beautiful back. Yeah, there. yeah. cool hat. All right, let's get to a break. Let's get to a break, and then Billy Horschel will be on the other side. Cannot wait to chat with him about how he felt to win that thing. First win in some years. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure on there. Yeah. How about everything going on off the field or off the course? How do you stay locked in on golf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder what he's catching out there. He's also got a very good wardrobe. Yeah, he looks good. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah. Yeah, super duper fit. Ripped up. And he blocked Ty Schmidt. We'll be back in four <laughs> minutes with Billy Horschel. Can't wait to chat with him. And also, we'll have some phone calls on the Five Energy phone line. one 833 4 We did a little research. Um, if you rode in an Uber, watched anything Disney, which I believe the finals are on, yeah. NBA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever logged on Facebook, gone to any event with Live Nation, flown on any Boeing planes, Use Citigroup or Bank of America at all. There's a chance the Saudi money is, uh, they are benefiting from that. It so is. I'm going to think about it. Think about it when you're making your decisions, okay? Don't be fucking ride sharing. No, mm -hmm. definitely not. All right, can't tweet about it either. No. no. And don't take any money out or use any of your money. At all. And don't go to any events, Live Nation. Nope. Or fucking Super Mario. Nintendo, they're in there. Yeah, that's think tough. So. EA Gaming, they're oh, fucking in there. No. How about Activision? What's that, Call of Duty? Oh, oh yeah. no. Fucking get off. Can't play anymore. All right. That's just Saudi. We will be also looking into any other countries that are terrible to see what their <laughs> mega rich are putting their money into. Uh -oh. Because honestly, yeah, see, this you know. is the time. Maybe this is the time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe now is the time to change everything. We're back in four. Cheers. Rehab my knee all night for this. Oh my. Wow. Sheesh. I don't know. He's not yet found his swing this morning. Look at him. Are you fucking whispering right now? The Miz. By the way, I love the show, Pat. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Oh, you weren't talking to me? <laughs> Hey, when you get sick of it, we understand. I don't like it. Because you hit a nice straight shot, and it's like a, a small half swing. Annoying. Let me yeah. show you how it's done, OK? Because you line up your ball. See, you have that little line there. I can't deal with it. Go like this. You look at it. 
check it out, you take a couple practice strokes, and then you just put the ball in the hole. Like, easy that. game. It is an easy game. <laughs> it was just a bit off. And there you go. <laughs> that easy, guys. So after Tahoe, are you going pro? There it is, it's in the hole. Don't turn it on. Don't turn it on. You don't want it. Don't want it. You got a nice little hat on, you got your sunglasses, you got your ones that aren't even out yet. Don't don't turn it on. You can hang out with your boy Aaron Rodgers all day. What was you that? Don't seven? Want it. Is that a seven? You don't want it. You don't want it. You, you don't want me to turn it on. You don't want me to turn it on. You don't want me to flip you don't want me to flip the switch. Flip the switch off and wait till Tahoe. Till Tahoe, buddy. Wait till Tahoe. Maybe my knee will be at 80%. Maybe. Is... You know what my life consisted of yesterday after that game ended? What's that? Okay. Bunch of fucking clown emojis with mustaches oh. burying me. Oh, no. I mean, bury, <laughs> bury. <laughs> oh, Go. Oh. They just, there's a bunch of, I mean, it was nonstop. Same emoji. Sorry, last one. Maybe, says Benny <laughs> Stotts. Just abs fire, Balky. There's another one. I'm here for this douche's meltdowns. A clown. Teal Tomahawk. And then Da Klan back and put respect oh. on Jag's name when you talk about because they're Colts kryptonite since the top three quarterback retired. AK man, y'all motherfuckers got the first pick in the draft again! <laughs> Ain't nobody putting respect on you. You're not putting respect on your teams, and you got a clown as your fucking emoji! <laughs> But this is what I actually had. Kiss our teal asses. Good morning, Pat Maxwell. Just a reminder, the Colts will not be in a playoffs. Oh, Matt Hall! Oh, come on, Matt. This team has not been in a playoffs. Oh, come on. And he is just and right in sending this to me. This clown <laughs> is right. Uh-huh. Because what happened yesterday, after, after, after that uh, game yesterday, and, and then yes. it's not just. Oh, my God. God. By the way, it's not just clowns on the internet oh, around God. Clown Town, Duval County. Holy okay, shit. This, this whole thing has kind of crept into our group text messages. Yeah. Absolutely. So our group text messages this morning as we're getting ready for the show, lots happening. You know, a lot of coaches were fired. Yeah. yeah. Torres, ah, he won eight of the last nine games. See you later. Uh, see you later. Nagy, ah, Zimmer, ah, Fangio, ah. I'm talking, there's a lot of big time news happening around the NFL that maybe we could talk about instead of the Colts thing, but no, no, no. Even in the group text, they just sent this over like 20 minutes ago. A perfect QBR, 100. Okay. okay. Average QBR, 50. Oh, Makes sense. Not so bad. it's not like, hey, it's average will be 70s, yeah. you know, right. 70s or whatever. In in the NFL quarterback QBR, 50 is the average. In a play-in game, okay, which I didn't know it was. I assume they did. Yeah, I would, I would guess they did. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, uh, and last week, by the way, against the Raiders was as well, I guess. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, and how's your family? What a fucking win. We will talk about that. Yeah. Because Staley's ended up on the side of a stat that isn't that great, but it'll be ignored because the greater stats say something different. Stat, whatever. Stat that. Stat, stat that. Stat that. Stat that. That was actual. They're not like your bullshit. Well, I still think mine are. <clears throat> in a playing game against the worst team in football, number one pick again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Carson Wentz posted a QBR of 4.4. <laughs> what are we doing? Yikes. Is that a real number? I, I don't know where the 4.4 came from, to be honest, after watching. Yeah. I mean, I guess there was a completion or two out there. Welcome back to the show on this same game parlay holiday 50K. For one person on the line, if you hit the longest odds for a same game parlay or same game parlay plus MLB game yeah. today, mm -hmm. yeah. just today though, needs the just game today. needs to happen mm -hmm. today, need to put it in today, need to opt in, go to FanDuel Sportsbook if you're available. And if we're coming to your state, we will do more of these types of things, I do believe. Everybody's competing for second place because I'm winning that. Day. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah I'm winning. Well. I don't know any of the people I bet on today. I ain't never seen, <laughs> I have not watched one second of baseball this year. Mm hmm. I'm going to win. You might win. Hell yeah. No. Probably not. But. Joining us now, speaking of winning, man just got done winning, uh, winning the Memorial Golf Tourney yeah. mm -hmm. in Dublin, Ohio. We had just chatted with him for about 10 seconds. It appears as if he is doing something much more awesome than all of us today. <laughs> the guy's absolutely yoked on the course. Had an eagle on 15 to tell everybody to go to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Horschel. Yay! Billy! Thank you, guys. Hey, you look amazing. Oh, is that hey, is that family right there? Yeah, I got my little guy fishing. Hey, what's up? Good luck out there. Go get it. Yeah. Give him thumbs up. Oh, yeah. that kid is awesome. What are you guys fishing for out there? Anything and everything. We're, we've been out here for about three hours, and we've caught nothing. No. So this is fast. zero. This is fascinating because I believe fishing is like some people's golf, 
right? As like a hobby, like uh, people go golf and it's just like time, you're kind of mindless, you're just doing your thing. And then the people that don't like golf normally get into like fishing, they'll just go out there and kind of sit. Is this always been the thing that you do? Uh, I did it a little bit when I was younger, but got into it in the last two years. Um, some of the other hobbies I like to do are probably a little too, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say dangerous, but they bring a little more risk involved. And so, uh, being on the boat, on the water with the kids and then, um, just trying to fish a little bit, uh, is a little bit more relaxing is a little bit more safer. Billy, what are some of your other hobbies? Are you like, uh, you out there with Pastrana? You jump in dirt bikes? <laughs> what are you, skydiving? No, I've never been on a dirt bike, but, uh, you know, I like to snowboard a little bit. I've talked, I've thought about getting the mountain bike riding. Uh, we spent our summers in Colorado, and so uh, a couple of those things are um, a little bit more risk prone than being on a boat. I'd say, and by the way, shout out to you for taking care of your body. Your body is your temple. Your body is the thing that won you uh, your seventh PJ Tour event there at the Memorial Golf Tournament in Dublin, Ohio. It had been a little bit since your last win. Was the course, was it you? What was it you think that made it for such a special weekend? Because it has to be incredibly difficult to have the lead and then just maintain it when people are hunting after you. What was it about the Memorial you think that made uh, you win that thing? Yeah, I think it was just the combination. The course was in uh, great shape. Uh, it required really uh, a lot of preci uh, precision. Uh, you had to be accurate with you know shots into the greens and put in the right spot. And you know it was just that one week um, that we all look for. You know we all hope for sometime in our career that we are pretty much every aspect of our game is on, and it was on for me. I played so beautifully this Saturday, that third round, um, to shoot seven under and take a five shot lead into the final round. That uh, you know, it was pretty much, it was pretty much, uh, in my mind, over at that point. But um, you know, I had to go out Sunday and just play halfway decent, and not really, not mess up or choke it away. Is that what you think about Sunday morning when you're waking up, or Saturday night when you're sleeping? It's like, how do you even fall asleep the night before a Sunday in which you have the lead of a big tournament? Yeah, that's a great question. It was easy to fall asleep, and then I woke up about three o'clock in the morning. And then my mind started, you know, racing, thinking about every scenario possible under the sun. And next thing, you, you know, took me about two more hours to get back to sleep. And then, um, you know, you wake up. And for me, I just whenever until I get to the golf course, I'm always thinking, you know, my mind just can't shut off. And then once I finally get to the golf course, I'm into my getting warmed up, getting ready to play. And then, you know, everything sort of just sort of falls to the wayside and i forget about all the thoughts that i've had so it's like your sanctuary it's your getaway it's uh it always has been have you played your entire life i assume did you grow up in the game and how did it, how'd you start yeah so uh i grew up uh on about two and a half acres my dad went out in the backyard and hit balls late in the day and so around the age of three i picked up a club and, and followed him out there and then you know we come from a very athletic family my my dad and his brothers played division one college football um you know, one of them played at University of Miami, one played at University of Cincinnati. So very athletic family, grew up playing, you know, baseball, tennis, uh, you know, played a little football. My younger brother played more football than I did, but golf and baseball were my two sports, and, and golf was the one that finally won out um, when I was in high school. I think the reason why a lot of us have enjoyed watching you play, uh, especially over the last couple of weeks, it's because you're like one of us out there. You like get pissed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. you like actually get. Is that because you think you come from an uber competitive family and that's how other sports do it? Because normally the golfers always have to like compress the anger and just be like, well, it wasn't our day today. Good luck out there. Or like, oh, that wasn't my best shot. I'll get the next one. I think you look like a human when you're like, mother, <laughs> not in front of your kid. And then like potentially break a club. Like I enjoy that. I think that makes you much more relatable. Is that just how you are in everything? Yeah, that's how I've always been. I've always been a emotional, fiery kind of competitor. Um, I remember, I think at 13 years old, you know, yelling at my, I was pitching a, a great game and my left fielder dropped the ball. Oh. Um, I think in like one of the last innings and I had a no hitter and, and I was pissed and I sort of reamed him a new one and he started crying. I felt bad. <laughs> uh, I've, I've always been that way. Um, you know, and I, I think golf, I think Yes, what they've seen on TV for so many years and the way people act and it's, you know, control emotions. But, I mean, I grew up around my dad's buddies and, and you know, that's the way it was. You know, you, you had a good time. You had a few drinks out in the golf course when they were playing. And, you know, you got upset when you hit a bad shot and you got super excited when you hit a great shot. 
you hit a lot of great shots this past weekend. Anything that steps out or sticks out in your mind that was when you knew that the game was all in touch and this was going to be a special weekend? Uh, I think I made a putt at number 13 on Saturday to go to six under par and, um, from about 12, 15 feet. And, and uh, as I'm walking up to the hole, I, I get this big old smile on my face. I reach out and I sort of take an extra second to try and get the smile off my face, but I just couldn't because – I was playing so well and so great. Uh, I sort of stood up and the camera catched me with a big old smile. At that point, I'm like, this is going to be a pretty special week. Yeah, everything seems to be falling here. This is great because I'll, I'll have like a good two to three hole run where like a putt falls and I'm like, okay, here we go. And I've heard the Miz say, don't look like a light switch. Don't turn me on. Don't let me get in a groove. You guys are like that and have to be like that every single weekend. The sport that we know that we suck at, you guys are supposed to be experts at. Is there ever a time where you think like today's going to be a terrible day or is the swing thought and the mental coaching basically the biggest part of the whole thing? Because failure is going to come, right? I mean, that's just expected yeah. that failure is going to come. It's almost like baseball. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, failure is going to come and if it does it can't rattle you how do you continue on whenever that happens yeah i mean there are days when we know it's not going to be a good day we know it's going to be a grind and somehow we're going to have to to figure out a way to play well but i mean there's just days there's weeks where it's like man nothing's going well you know you didn't practice well in, up leading up to it you don't feel great about your game you're tired your body hurts whatever it may be um but you know i think the great thing about us is that you know, three days later, we're back into another new tournament trying to figure out a way to, to win that one. So it's one of those things where we got to have a short term memory. You can't really um, dwell too much on on the bad and on the good. You try to um, take it all in and, and soak in that moment when you are playing well and when you do get a victory. And um, yeah, so, I mean, it's a mental, mental grind. I mean, I've been doing this for professionally now for 13 years, 35 years old, been playing for my, you know, my entire life. This game beats the crap out of you. It really does. And, I mean, we that's why you see some guys just, uh, you know, after a few years of, you know, playing so great and their game goes downhill, they just uh, say, hey, you know what, I'm going to retire. It's exhausting, right? I, it has to be exhausting. And I, I think one of the best lines I've ever heard, it was from um, a neighbor of mine, and I assume he didn't make it up. But he told me with a very straight face as we were hitting balls in his backyard or whatever, and he's an older man. And uh, he goes, you know why they call it golf? And I said, what? He said, because fuck was taken. <laughs> and it's like, that is such a real, that is such a real thing for all of us. I couldn't even imagine it being our life uh, and what puts the roof over our head. Congrats on the win. We hope you continue to get more of those. Can't help but talk about the elephant in the room here in golf, though. Because of what you just chatted about there with like, hey, I've been in this for 13 years. It's a grind. It beats the hell out of you. There is now what appears to be maybe the most pivotal time in the history of golf. How do you block out all the outside noise for what's going on with Liv and the PGA Tour and what the reaction is going to be and all this? And how do you continue to go on, be the best golfer you could possibly be without getting distracted by everything? And uh, I'm sure the PGA Tour is not going to be happy I'm asking this, and they're the ones who set this up, but there has to be regular dialogue amongst all of you on the PGA Tour about what's going on right now, right? That has to be, you don't have to tell us what's being said, but that is certainly something that's maybe, has that brought you guys together? And is that something you're chatting about on a regular basis here? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, the tour is very aware of what the, the everyone's talking about on tour. I mean, you know, we're all aware of what's happening with Liv. Um, you know, I'd be lying to say it's not exciting. I think the thing that's exciting about it is the money that they get the, you know, they're offering up to play for on a weekly basis. Um, you know, hey, I, I played great last week and I won $2.1 million. And that's a lot of effort. Hey, yeah. you're out there fishing with the kids. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, they're offering, you win one of their events, it's like $4 million. And, you know, listen, we are professional golfers. We make a lot of money um, in this world compared to what a, a regular worker is. And I know what a regular worker is. I grew up in a blue collar house, household, lower middle class. Neither of my parents had a degree. There was times that only one of my parents had a job. So I understand the value of money very, very well. Um, but when you look at it compared to the other sports in the United States, baseball, football, basketball, these guys make a ton of money. Um, and so someone's coming along now throwing more money out there, you know, that's going to get guys talking and, you know, it should get guys talking, but, you know, every, everybody's uh, what they play for, everybody's perspective, you know, what means, you know, the most to some people is different. Um, for me, 
the PJ Tour has been very great to me, and I'm very happy to be with them. I have some unbelievable sponsors that I get taken care of very well financially on, on the, you know, off the golf course. So, you know, when I look at the live, yes, it's an opportunity, but there's some things that on the other end that if I if I went to go play live that you know may may ruin some relationships I have and some sponsorships I have. And so for me, I've been very very blessed that um, I've done well on and off the golf course, but. As I've told all the guys that go play live, I don't fault them for making that decision. They're making a decision, um, whether it being financial, whether it being the opportunity to play less in a year. You know, they're only offering right now eight eight events, and at the most, we're going to have 15 events in a season. So, um, but yeah, you know, we're all independent contractors. We all get the, the ability to make our own decisions and make our own schedule. And so if, if they feel this is the best opportunity for them in the future um, to go play live, then then that's, that's – uh, happy for them but for me i'm happy on the pj tour and and trying to make it better and, and and make as much money as i can out there hey thank you for that answer hey honestly thank you for that answer you could have very easily just you know shied away from that conversation and i would we all would have been very understanding of yeah. it i think even the people would that was a very real answer which i think i appreciate so much especially you saying you come from a blue collar family because i just assumed all golfers mm -hmm. come from you know yuck Silver spoon. Yeah, I mean, no. Yeah. Not, not, not at all. Not, not, you know, there's, yes, there's obviously that's always probably been the stigma. And I would say there's still probably a lot of golfers that come from that, but not not me, man. My dad worked construction. I mean, I worked on I worked on his team going to job sites, being there at 6 a.m. in the morning before his son come up. He worked till sun come down, doing the labor, doing the grunt work. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very aware of what, you know, the average American does for, for their job to try and just take care of their family. That's what it comes down to. Even at my level now, I still, I play golf, but everything I do is for my kids and for my family and give, hopefully give them a better life in the future. Hey, you're awesome, huh? <laughs> hey, you're all, And listen, the fact that I just learned all this about you and you answered that question, I think you have become, you know, my favorite golfer. Yeah. And with that being said, this fucking asshole right here, you blocked him in 2017. He said something terrible about you on Twitter. I would like him to either explain himself or apologize to you after learning about what you just learned about Billy fucking Horschel, Ty Schmidt. Well, I think it just goes to everyone out there. <laughs> you really shouldn't ever judge a book by its cover. You really shouldn't. Because like you said, I, I fucking love this guy now, and I just feel like an asshole. But my question would well, be. Well, 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 let's, you have him blocked right now. Okay, Billy, on yeah, Twitter? So I, yeah, I, I mean, he's not the first one that I've blocked. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Me neither. I, 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 will... you know, I, I actually stopped running my Twitter account. My, my team runs my Twitter. I run my Instagram um, just because I got sick and tired of, of hearing, reading dumb crap, whether it be about me or stuff in the world. Oh, it's um, yeah, you But, you know, it's one of those things that what people see on the outside is not really what, you know, who someone really is. And as I've always said, I said, you know, you're seeing us in our competitive you know, environment on the field, on the golf course, playing our hearts out at a vulnerable stage. And so I'm trying to play the best I can. And if I act like an idiot on the golf course, you know, that's just, that doesn't mean I'm an idiot off the golf course. That just means I want something so bad that, you know, my emotion comes out. So I, I, I that's why I say, you know, I, I look at myself more as an athlete than a golfer. You know, I think I would have been great in football or baseball yeah, and the way, have. you know, they are so, uh, they're allowed to be fiery and and it's expected. And sort of, it's normal. You know, yeah. Yeah. There's precedent on, uh, you know, baseball players, uh, football guys, even I guess tennis, too. You said you played. There's been yeah. outbursts in those sports a lot, you know, and emotion and fireness and, you know, blue collar guys. Oh, yeah. Changing the trajectory of their entire family forever with a couple irons and some golf balls and nothing but space and opportunity. And then here comes some asshole from Iowa <laughs> sending <laughs> tweets trying to bury you. And by the way, I block people too. I absolutely love the move. Uh, but Ty's a really good guy. I do believe he would not say anything of the uh, similar now after watching you do what you did on Sunday. And Ty, your question for Mr. Billy Ho because I know you've sent these tweets to him a lot and yeah. he has never seen him he has never seen him because he's blocked yeah no i mean it hey you know like i said at the time i think and afterwards especially way more pissed that you blocked me and that you know that that was kind of just hanging in front of me but i i am curious because you are so fiery and you wear your emotions on the sleeve like 
in between the ropes and stuff like that, do you have fans that are like kind of ever trying to get in your head or talk shit to you too? Because I assume, you know, guys like me, if, if I'm doing it, you going into Sunday that like while you're at these events and you're kind of getting fired up and maybe giving these fans what they want, like, do you ever have any of those kind of interactions? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm a rarity out there as, as well in those situations. Uh, I'm not afraid of, in certain situations to chime back, um, depending on what people say. Um, I like to have a good time. You know, obviously, if it's something real stupid, I may not say much. But, you know, obviously, I'm a Florida Gator. You play a lot uh, around the southeast. And so there's times people may say, you know, like, go dog or something. But, you know, sometimes I say, like, go Vols, like the volunteers. I'm like, you guys haven't beaten us, like, maybe once in the last 15 years. I mean, really, that's what you're going to come at me with. And then, you know, they're, like I said, I mean, I have no problem, you know, saying things to certain people on the course if, if they're just acting like an idiot. Um, I had a funny situation out in the waste management event in Phoenix a couple of years ago. I'm walking off a tee and there's a guy yelling my name. And after like the third time, I finally look over and he's with his buddies and he's like, Billy, hey, unblock me on Twitter. And I'm like, I'm like, no, you were a dumbass. That's why you got blocked. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, exactly. And all his buddies, all his buddies like are, you know, you know, giving a heart, you know, busting his chops now because a lot of time they don't fans don't expect us to say anything back and when they do and if you got a really good comeback or good uh little back and forth with them they're absolutely love it and you change like i've changed people's opinion about me because of that not that i was trying just just because oh my god i love you you're so awesome now i'm like thanks okay that's that's great yeah, yeah. you seem to be an actual human i think that yeah. is why you pretend because hearing people and then not responding is very robotic because everybody knows you're standing six feet away from them. you can definitely yeah. hear that person and the fact hey i think did somebody uh is there a fish being pulled out of the water right there oh uh, uh, we're just i don't know we're not catching anything <laughs> here oh look okay. at that beard oh, wow Oh, yeah. Dad, show him the beer. Oh, look at oh! That. oh, hell yeah. Hey, that's beautiful. Let's pull some fish out of here. I'll start hooking some shit. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Billy. Uh, Pat's got a pretty big uh, golf tournament yeah. coming up out in Tahoe. How do you study a course going into it? Do you just play one round, or do you actually like go online and kind of see what the lay of the land is like? Yeah, so I mean, fortunate enough on the PJ Tour, we play a lot of the same courses. But perfect example is next week we're going to Boston for the U.S. Open at oh, Brookline. Yeah. I've never been there, so uh, my usually my usual uh, you know practice routine for courses I haven't seen is I'll usually get there maybe like especially a major. I'll get there Sunday, you know, play nine holes, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't have that uh, time. By Bill. then, I should have a, a good Bill, understanding. I don't of, have of the that time, and, Bill. I you, I can't do that, Bill. I don't have that time. I know, I know you guys have time. So, um, yeah, my my best recommendation is play 18 holes and then just pray that you play well in the tournament. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. All right. All right, I can't do that. Cool. I will lock that one down. The We play by, like, your guys' rules. Do you ever play with your friends that aren't PGA golfers and do they all shoot in the hundreds playing by your rules? Because that's what everybody's basically telling me. Like, there's no rolling, there's no fluffing, there's no, oh, breakfast ball, there's no, there, everything is, it, do you play with any, like, uh, regular golfers and does it just absolutely kill them like it's probably going to do to me? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so when I, I have a lot of buddies I play with at home that are just regular guys that uh, love the game of golf and you know, it's funny because they may say their handicap is this, and if they would actually play a tournament, they would shoot a lot higher because they don't, they can't roll the ball. You know, they can't take the drop. You know, close to the green when they hit in the water, thirty yards short of the green. Oh, no. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, they would, they would be a nervous wreck just like you would be going into this tournament. Like you tell me, I can't roll the ball. And yeah, then I've got a bad lie, and like <laughs> a two footer is not good. I got to tap out a two footer, really. Yes, that that's gonna be a night. Nice, I think just. What? I just got to get it on the fairway. Yeah. yeah. Every time. Hit yeah. it straight. Exactly. And then I just Fairways gotta, and greens. Then just put it on the green. Yep. Boom. And then two, two putt, putt, and then putt. And I'm out of there. Yeah. Boom. You Game's won. It's easy. About Tahoe is the ball goes so far. So you're going to be hitting a mile. Okay. So a club. Elevation. Club yep. down. Club down one. Put it in the middle of the green. Yes. Just put it in the hole. Birdie every time. Yeah. Easy. Just, it's that simple. <laughs> right? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Did we just figure it out? Yeah, that's great it. news. How come you don't do that? 
I'm just not smart enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Billy is name. Billy, uh, we have a Billy yeah. in our friend group, but I do see on the internet that Billy is not a normal, uh, like, adult name. I We've had one in our group, so it doesn't make any sense, but I see the internet have that reaction. Birth name Billy, nickname Billy, always been called Billy. Uh, birth name is William. My uh-huh. dad is William, so mm-hmm. everyone called him Billy, and then... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a junior. We have different middle names, but they just called me Billy. Like, uh, but all his buddies used to call him Billy, and they still call him Billy. And then I was considered little Billy because they're not going to call my dad Bill. Bill. Some little people Bill. call him Bill, but a lot of my, a lot of my dad's buddies still call me, you know, little Billy or or whatever, which is cool with me. And um, but uh, yeah, and then I have friends like a couple buddies over in London that play for some Premier League teams. You know, they call me Bill. Um, you know, Bill, Bill Billy, you know, it, I'll pretty much answer anything. Who's your friends in the Premier League? Um, Mark Noble, who just retired from West Ham. Good career. And then oh, uh, yeah. Declan Rice, who is uh, a stud at 20, 23 years old, played, played for West Ham. Um, unbelievable on the England national team. And so um, those are two really good buddies of mine. You like soccer? I love it. Hey, how about we're about to win the fucking soccer Lombardi in Qatar, pal? We got yeah. a team this year. I know we do. We got a tough group, though. We've got no. we the uh, England, Don. and uh, well, is, I think it's Israel. No, Iran, Iran, Iran. Wales, Iran. and England. It's a group of yeah. death because we're in it. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's a, this team. We got a team. Last question for you here, Billy. We can't thank you enough for your time. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, Billy. One of my fa- favorite looks of all time was your octopus pants uh, back at the U.S. Open. Uh, it's coming up here. Do you have any good looks coming up? And how long in advance? Do you plan your looks and your pants for the uh, majors? So that's Ralph Lauren, my my clothing sponsor. They they put all the looks together, and Whoa, and geez. the look for the U.S. Open's probably been already decided on. You know, like eight months ago, probably last fall, maybe even last summer, of what I was gonna wear. Um, I don't wear. I'm not. I don't think it was anything special. Oh. Those style pants of wearing like animal prints and and a lot of the crazy pants I've worn are. Are, uh, are gone now. Um, I haven't played well in them um, <laughs> since that U.S. Open. And so I am superstitious. And then my, my, my teacher, Todd Anderson, just said, hey, we need to um, – sorry, someone call me. No, we need fault. to uh, We need to back off these pants. These pants aren't w- doing us any favor anymore. So I wear, I wear like funny shorts in, in practice rounds now is, is the gift. So the you're, gist. A, you're a Ralph Lauren guy? And what was this? What was on your arm there? Is that a whoop? Yeah, that's a whoop. So I've wore that for a couple of years. I just don't like anything on my wrist. You know, it gives a bad tan line, so it's up on the arm, and usually a sleeve covers it. But the sleeves that on, on Sunday they were they were a little short. They showed a little bit more of the arm than I was expecting. Yeah, but you look sweet. Yeah. I mean, you look at it. What is the um? What was the high heart rate on Sunday? Uh, you know, I actually looked at it. It was shockingly. I mean, it was in my normal range. I think it was probably like one thirty. Was probably the highest. Are you at, uh, are you above one twenty for the entirety of the round? Yeah, I, I live in the one 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 fifteen to one twenty five range pretty much for the entire round. Hey, that's pretty good. That's why you're. I guess so. I like I said, I'm, I'm blessed with good genes. If all like I said, all my uh, my dad's side of the family, his brothers and him, were all like six two, six three. That'd be Willie. Yeah. Uh, We can't thank you enough for joining us, Billy. Good luck with everything. Good luck on the major first win that comes. And uh, thank you for your time, man. Thanks, guys. Love it. I'll come back anytime you want. Hey, ask your uh, team. Please please unblock me, Billy. (laughs) Please unblock me. I'll tell your team. Uh, You're the man. Uh, send the uh, the Twitter handle to my team, and I'll tell them to block it. Yes. Tell them to bury him too, ladies yes. and gentlemen. <laughs> Billy Horschel, thank you. Yeah. Good guy, blue Bye. collar guy. Awesome. Yeah. See, always thought he was a silver spoon asshole. He's not. <laughs> You're a bad guy. He's not. Hey, I can own up to my mistakes. You are a bad guy. I mean, what I said probably wasn't as bad as what a lot of probably, people yeah. were saying. He just heard that last part. He laughed so hard. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't hang up fast enough. No, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Billy. Might have been the last guy. guy he ever blocked before handing over his Twitter, too. Yeah, legit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck this. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he did have a bad Sunday that particular Sunday. He could have. Tracked it back. What really set you off? I read that one. At Ty Schmidt. Fuck this guy. Did, did it have any money. retweets? No. <laughs> did it have any action at all? No. No, but I saw it. Block him. Let's move on. You guys run Twitter now. AJ Hawks on the other side. Hour two then. That was kind of bad. But. I hate it, though. He gave he, a great live answer, too. He did. Yeah. Great live answer. I, I love the fact that 
from that answer, we learned that he is once again a human. Mm -hmm. They are talking about it. They understand why guys are going. They, they can completely say, do what you got to do. He said he's very thankful to be in a PGA Tour, appreciates the PGA Tour, wants to build it and be as good as possible. I wonder who all is in those ranks, right? Rory's come out basically. Sure. Yeah. JT, he's a, JT, they, they're going to feel as if, hey, it's our, this is our tour. And I assume the PGA has reached out to them and been like, hey, oh, yeah. This is your guys' yeah, tour now. Guys. Well, and this, well, think about giving you guys some guaranteed money. Too. Yeah. Well, the move the needle almost does. Like, hey, if you're in the top, a lot of those Tiger guys. Tiger got $10 million from that. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, not doesn't a, two through 10, they also get yeah, but millions of dollars. Guys, too. $100 million. It, it came out Bryson right, DeChambeau yeah. north of $100 million guaranteed to go play and live. I thought he was the first one, too. I thought we heard he about the, DeChambeau. He was the first rumored back Forever ago. Before yeah. Phil? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think or, either that or they were synonymous. It was like those two were Phil and Bryson. Yeah. Yeah. But to your point too about like Billy, like with it being through the PGA, like there's no way they wanted him to answer that question. I like, just say no comment. Like uh, you know, I mean, there's no way. And the PGA Tour didn't tell us to not ask about live golf. They didn't tell us to. But I, it felt as if, you know, there were like uh, here's some act. Billy is one seven. Yeah, he's yeah, won right. the Memorial. Mm -hmm. He's done all this. And it's like Billy knew we were gonna ask though. Yeah. Yeah. Has to. Had to. The biggest conversation in golf right now. How could we not? Yeah. Great answer from yeah. a mm -hmm. boat mm -hmm. by Billy Horshaw. And you see how a lot of these other guys are answering it where it's like they they're freeze talking up. about it, but they freeze up and they give kind of like a non answer. Like he had like a very like I mean, like that made a, a lot of sense yeah. for a guy why he would potentially stay on the PGA tour. How about Billy with those chops? Oh, Construction oh. worker, mm -hmm. old Billy, mm -hmm. fishing. Yep. Yeah. The OG Billy Horschel mm -hmm. out there grabbing that. For you. Get the, give me that fishing rod. I like the little Billy decided, hey, I ain't going to fucking Canada this week here. Yeah, he's out on a boat. I made two point one million dollars last yeah. week. I'm a good. lot of money, by the way. He said, yeah. Yeah. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I give him more money, I guess, somewhere, but yeah. a lot of money. Less call. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He pointed out all yeah. the the reality. It was awesome. I guess people aren't exactly thrilled with. Um, I mean, people are always going to be pissed off about whatever, especially, you know, about anything. sheep or whatever. But the, um, I would do whatever you tell me to do. I will be upset about anything you tell me to be upset about. Even if it comes out that you are maybe one of the most despicable people of all time, I will still listen to what you say. Even if contradictions are riddled through your entire being, I will listen to everything you have to say. Because that is how I'm wired and programmed. I will fight anybody who says anything differently than what you have told me to think and say. That's what we have a lot of in the world we're in. Oh, yeah. Both sides, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both sides are, what am I supposed to say to these people? How am I supposed to feel about this thing? Say no more. <laughs> I'm fucking out here. I will battle in the streets mm -hmm. of social media for you. Um, but just to reiterate, Live Golf does have... A lot of Saudi Arabia money behind oh, it. Bottomless yes. pit. A lot. See also Twitter, mm -hmm. which is where everybody's tweeting about how mad mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. Grandstand. On that particular platform, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, largest investor, longest investor. Yeah, by far. Uber. A lot of people use Uber. Disney. Yeah. A lot of people watch Disney. People. Live Nation. Mm -hmm. Go to events. Feast. It's no sea geek. That's why, you know, we're sea geek people. Yeah. So I'm just saying, if, not, if we're going to do this, we're let's do it. Uh huh. If we as a people are going to do it, let's fucking do it. Here we go. Gas, no more. Mm -hmm. mm. Everybody's walking, riding bikes, getting Teslas. Sure. All right. To, to, really, to really do this, buy a $200,000 Tesla. That's right. <laughs> now. I just, I, I think it's fascinating the picking and choosing of what we are outraged by. And when companies do it, it's okay, that's good business. But since it's an individual entity, a player, a human, now it's like a big deal. And I understand that, listen, I'm cool with everybody being pissed off about it, but I'm just saying it's fascinating why and what makes you go versus other stuff. If we looked in, and I've talked about this on this show, there are some venture capitalist funds that have trillions of dollars. You know why? Because they have a lot of money from people that have had money for a long time who have probably done terrible things in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how we all either just compress that and move on, or if now's gonna be the time, no more ride sharing. Well, 
No more Roger. No more ain't stopping movies. anytime yeah. soon. That's a shame. I was really just getting into the Obi Wan Kenobi show on Disney Plus. I'm gonna have to cancel that subscription. Right, that show stinks. Well, not just no. that. I mean, can't watch the finals. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they also own portions of Fox too. So mm-hmm. like some of the stuff that comes out, movies. Oh, yeah, Fox oh my movie. god, yeah. these movies we're about to watch. Need to. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was. I mean, Wolf, Wolf of Wall Brothers. Street got funded by some guy from China who mm-hmm. got his money through very illicit means. Can't watch it ever again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. And I love Scorsese. That's why I, I, I do not care. I'll still be watching I the final. The Sorry that I am. Uh, what? You're a bad guy. I guess so. Go but Celtics. Hour two starts on the other side of this break. I'm gonna run to the bathroom. We just we would just like for maybe the players not to be the only ones that get buried. Yeah. If we're gonna go attack people for things, let's make sure the businesses that are making billions and trillions of dollars are all as, as well. Hour two on the other side. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back <laughs> to the Pat McAfee Holy Show. Shit. Hour two on this June 8th, 2022 begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us. And if it wasn't for the 207 drug tests that I had to take, in a 27 month period, because I was in the substance of abuse program mm-hmm. for the NFL, I'm not sure I would have been able to cut off the stream right there and not hit the ground at all. Yeah. Fine work. I still have to piss terribly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we will <laughs> handle that in about 20 minutes or so. But it is great to be back. The toxic table is here at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. Tone Diggs just snuck back in. Good for you, Tone. Good for your bladder. Tire and joining us. Yeah, I'm pretty winded as well. Joining us from an attic in Ohio, a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion, Whoa. a private plane survivor, mm-hmm. a COVID survivor, mm-hmm. Damn. and a man who watches Disney while wearing Nikes. Mm-hmm. Waiting on his Uber. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Hey! Hey, AJ! Oh! What's up, A.J.? Hey, so I caught the the tail end. What countries are we not allowed to be involved with? Well, it's not just countries. It's also people. People in those countries. uh, Depending upon who has the cash. So you're telling me all these big time companies have all this uh, money that backs them that may not be, uh, you know, on the up and up? Well, uh, these companies are not getting attacked for what the money they're taking from these VCs and stuff like that. Uh, Actually, it's celebrated. Another round of funding. funding. Like it's celebrated. Like another round of funding is happening. Another round of funding is happening. Congrats. The valuation is this. There's never like a a follow-up. And maybe we should start doing this a little bit more. There's never a follow-up of like, where did every dollar come from there? And that, Mm. where does dollars come from in that investment? Did those come from? Oh, don't tell oh, me. No. Oh, I'll say it. Like, is that going to start happening? Because it, I feel like, and I think the reason why I'm doing this and saying this, it's not because I support the money and all this stuff. It's because I don't like the fact that these players, the athletes, are the ones that are being attacked by this when money from undesirable places has been happening in the world since forever. And it's not, I think that is my biggest thing. Like, we're attacking Dustin Johnson, who's an athlete who has worked his ass off and getting paid, but we're not attacking Uber, who was literally saved by, or Live Nation, who's like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that is. That's just fascinating to me, I guess. But now is a good time for us to take stand on everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now is a good time for us as a society to start asking where every single dollar has come from. And we accept a dollar uh, from Google here. Yeah. Uh oh. Whoa! I mean, we got to look into that. Uh-oh. Yeah. Where you know what I mean? Like that is. You got to stop using your iPhone too. Well, that's gonna be tough. But yeah. Yeah. is that what we're that. doing? Is that what we're? Are we all? I don't think a whole lot of uh, stuff will get done or will get made uh, if that kind of happens. Startups might struggle a little bit. Definitely. What are you saying? Where do you draw the line, though? Okay, this well, is an interesting uh, conversation. What, 
what is acceptable and what is not when accepting money from somebody. Well, that's kind of the entire like conversation. Stuff that they have done in the past. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. And where is their money from? Like, what is considered good money? Yeah. Is there good money out there? No. Probably Doubt not. It. Dogecoin. It all started with Bezos? gold. It all Let started alone. with gold and a lot of money, a lot of blood's been spilled over gold. <clears throat> well, not just gold. I mean, there's drug money out there that's <laughs> killing my friends that have died from that type of yeah. stuff is out there. I mean, there is just... There's a never-ending question about where money is from. Now, I'm not saying what any of these people have done who had this money is right. We're not saying that. We're saying the complete opposite, actually. We're just like, how come athletes are the ones being attacked by this when everybody else has been a part of this for a long, long time for their businesses? That's all I want to know. Yeah, I think DeShambo going over is another big name. Like, what? how many guys are they going to get? Because I, I know you had Billy Horschel, and I saw some of that. Billy was great, Ty. Good luck. That was awesome. I, I don't know if you'll be unblocked by the squad. But uh, also, Ty might be a bit gun shy to go after anybody on Twitter, I feel like, moving forward. Nah. No, no, no. Ty will nah. still let it be. He yeah. rarely, Ty works for a social media company, rarely uses it. I mean, he'll he'll creep and tweak <laughs> and stuff like that. But he's not that active anymore. He saves it all for the, that microphone and the pods microphone and the office, which we do appreciate <laughs> on the day to day. But him coming from a construction family, like I was. I love Billy that. sounds like a, a prime candidate to go over to live and get a big chunk of money to actually go play and then go compete in these 48-player fields and get some huge purse, oh, yeah. purses, I guess. Okay, he, he cut quite a promo thanking the PGA Tour for what the PGA Tour has done for him and making the PGA Tour as good as it possibly can be. It seems like there is now becoming two different teams, though, right? There's the live team and then there's the PGA team. The morning men, I believe, Nick told me this, they talked about the uh, live guys who are going into majors – being like the NWO showing up and like, hey, the, we're from the Live League. We're yeah. coming in to win your majors. How you doing? Keep it moving. I don't know if that's how the atmosphere will be, but I do know if Bryson's on the card who hits the ball further than anybody. Yep. Dustin Johnson is what? Top five in the ball far, right? Mm -hmm. Explosive yeah. and exciting. Mm -hmm. Phil Mickelson's there. Kevin Nas there. Sergio Garcia's there. I think there's enough names to Bill that'll captivate people's attention. Now there's, they have teams and rules and they're doing this entire thing. So I don't necessarily understand how that whole thing will go. But I believe they have enough to generate some moves. Tone Dakes, one half of the hammer. Done. Cowboys said, nah, not enough good names for me. In which, by the way, you're not the only person saying that. There's a lot of people saying that. They've already that. gotten more big names than I thought I'm, they would get. I'm not yeah. saying that they won't. I'm saying right now, like they're getting guys, I and mean, maybe this is the right first move. They're getting guys who are on their back nine of their career, like like DJ no. Phil. So it's like the MLS. Bryson's like 27. Is he? Yes, Bryson is young. I, He's see, been banged up this last year, I think. I would have said him, Scotty Scheffler, combined age, 89. Yeah. <laughs> Just about. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have said. Yeah, but nobody likes Bryson. What? People oh. feel, but people feel one way or the other about Bryson. He's True. a polarizing figure. He, I love watching him. I like him. Bryce Off is awesome. To me, I, I think like you just too. need one of these names to be in contention on Sunday in the live, and we'll all be watching. It doesn't matter who they're playing against. You need one guy that we know of, and we will watch to see if they'll win the tournament. How do we watch? YouTube. It's on YouTube. That's why it's like, how long is it going to be till Fox is like, all right, fuck it, let's put live, let's, yeah. let's put live league on our channel right now. Who is it? It's NBC and CBS now have deals with the PGA. Yeah, and ESPN. Yep, and ESPN, big ones. So Fox is the only one that's not in. Just fuck it. Let's Fox put it had on the TV. US Open and then they lost it, I believe. I think the PGA is talking to Fox like, don't even think about it. There is. This is another fun game to play. Ten months from now, maybe a year from now. How many com companies are sponsoring those events? And who will be the first company that'll do it, that'll basically say, all right, we'll do it. You guys can too. We'll do this. I'm sure they have sponsors, don't they already? Are they even looking for sponsors? Do they need the sponsorship money? Well, in all the companies you have been listing, like, I assume those are the ones that are just going to be like, okay, yeah, we'll jump in. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We were trying to do some research on where it all goes because I do not love the thought that the athletes are the only people getting buried, AJ. I don't like yeah, that. absolutely. And I think it's because we're athletes. Obviously, we're an athlete-friendly show. I think everybody knows that. But I don't enjoy everybody all of a sudden cares so heavily, which I respect and appreciate the fact and why you care and everything like that. But how come your everything is turned towards just the athletes are doing this and not zooming out a little bit and being like, oh, my God, every company I use is... 
I'm a terrible person. Okay. Yeah, nobody's nobody's hands are clean in any of it. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Well, so if you sit here and try to grandstand and virtue signal all over and tell people what they should do, I understand there's some terrible things. And we respect all over the world. it, by the way. We respect the, the like. Oh yeah. Yes. I think you should. I like when people take a stand on something. I just feel like this one might be a losing battle because what Liv is doing and building up all this, I, they already got more names than I thought they would this year, and they haven't even had one event yet. So I think a lot of the, the crew is hanging back. Hey, how's the first event go? What's the second event look like? Oh, maybe I'll slide in there. So they're four hundred million dollars in, I think, with Phil Jeez. and Dustin Johnson yeah. and DeChambeau. At least a billion dollar investment is nothing to a lot of these venture capitalists, let alone uh, an entire kingdom that is now selling oil to the entire world. By the way, the entire world is now. So that's only going to continue. You know, that's only going to continue to go up and from i've never been there but their perspective what they're saying is we are trying to change how people think about our country and yeah. the way we go about doing things now in a very recent history something that happened over there where everybody's like same old saudi arabia mm -hmm. but saudi's like no we're trying to become a more a billion dollar investments nothing they're only 400 million into this thing another 600 million dollars in bonuses and guaranteed money to people is nothing whenever you're talking about how much money these motherfuckers invest in the companies not just them by the way other people who have a shit ton of very good money mm -hmm. Obviously, they invest in all this stuff. So, I mean, there is no, I, and there, what Dan Rappaport said, it is a bottomless, mm -hmm. yeah, bottomless yeah. pit of yeah. money that they can dive into. They could get everybody. Well, we if know. Phil goes back to the open, does well, wins money there, or Dustin goes and DeChambeau goes, that, that conversation in the clubhouse, Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, is going to be like, well, why would I not take a hundred million guaranteed dollars and then I can still come back and play for majors and make money here? It makes no sense why you wouldn't. And I think PJ has to understand that. I think they do. Well, we know, and we know they have at least 500 more because they were going to offer Tiger fucking 750, 800, 900, whatever it was. So they're willing to spend all that money. Uh, but did they need to spend a hundred million on Bryson? Don't you think Bryson probably went over for like 50? You think DJ probably would have went over for 50? I think now it's like a... Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a marketing thing, yeah, too. Splash. Mm -hmm. Flex. And the other players are just waiting. Hey, what is my guarantee? Like, you try to, hey, get your agent to kind of get a feel for what my number may be. And then, okay, let's get that. That's why that's why Billy's great. He just won. The Memorial was a big tournament, 2.1 mil. I guess his, his number probably went up with the live people. Hey, this is like an NIL type situation. Yes. It's like people What's your getting, value? You're right. Not like four star, five star. What's your NIL value? Yeah. So guys are learning how much they want to pay me? 60 million. Fuck. How much yeah, is. Here we go. How much is blah blah get? 62. Oh, mm. me. Uh, gonna need 63 from that. <laughs> yeah. Gonna need 63 if that's what old. But I, I honestly, with Greg Norman running this thing, right? That's mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. shock. He has Dustin Johnson was standing right next to him mm -hmm. in the group photo that they did. DJ was right next to him. Phil was off to the side. He is dressed like <laughs> A guy who just got two hundred million dollars can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. He's you know he might be plus one sixty from the way the internet has been speaking off this two hundred million deal. He's dressing super cool. I feel like they are all like proud. Yeah, almost like hey, we're changing the way professional golf is. We are changing the way this is going, and the PGA is going to have to figure it the fuck out. I, I don't know, know how. I don't know how either. They're get, they're oh. PGA is not going to find that kind of money to throw at people. Yeah, but do you think there's a possibility that if a bunch of these kind of like mid-tier guys or what, however you want to call them, go over there, that like some of the real top dogs on the PGA will be like, okay, fuck it, we'll just stay here. We'll let Liv cannibalize this tour. And yeah, you know, I I might not be winning as much as I would if I won one of those events, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep just racking up top tens yeah. here. Is there gonna be another one that comes? <sighs> I mean, if somebody, it's going to have to take some real personal beef with somebody that has trillions of dollars to try to do it. Well, trillions of dollars, of course, but if you get somebody who has a billion, yeah. like, there's a lot of, I mean, you but go you down the to, list. You have to eventually, I understand what it sounds like, obviously, they have endless money over there. At some point, though, do you have to show some kind of income? All right, so I don't want to even mention this because it's vastly different, but like when AEW came in or WCW came in with Turner against WWF and Vince McMahon made his money and was going all in and competing against this big backing. He talked about it in here. 
you know, they're not thinking about profit for what, the first four or five years. Like that is literally how all these big business people think. The big business people think, they, you know, you hear quotes from them about patience and the long term and all that. It's like, well, Bob, I can't fucking buy gas today. So it's hard for me to think patience about money and investment if I can't pay a bill tomorrow, pal. So it's a vastly different world. They're thinking like 10 years from now. Like 10 years from now, will we be able to have success in a functioning business? I don't know if that's what this team is thinking, but that's normally these businesses that come into Rattle who have a lot of money. Oh, we're thinking about the long game here. Uh, we know it's going to be tough early, first four, five, six years, but 10, 15 years, we're going to be in there. It's like, how do you have that much forethought? I could not do that ever. I mean, it's especially, like like you said, I mean, if especially if you get these other, like, companies involved in everything like at some point like they're not you know they're, they they want to make money it's not just like okay well whatever you know right. we'll, who's awesome. commentating this i was i'm gonna get buried as well well i was surprised that they Ooh. haven't paid someone huge to commentate right? probably some european guys right the first one's in london i'm not taking it remember <laughs> i don't right. I don't do uber i've never seen a fucking disney movie nope okay yeah. i private. shot from seat geek mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a Tesla. Yeah. So keep attacking me, you fucking sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm more than you are. Dude, I'm, I'm more than you are. 100 million? Me? I'm not taking it. No way. All not right. today. Remember, we're nope. stopping. We're not r- ride sharing anymore. 200 million? We're not. Uh, we're Who not gave t- Uber? Who bailed Uber out? All these companies I'm saying all have a pretty significant amount of Saudi Arabia money. So the public investment fund, the PIF, which is what backs to live, is the wealth uh, fund of the Saudi Arabian government that they put into to basically make money off of and invest. It's alleged to be worth at about $600 billion itself. It's a lot of money. Which might be probably double that. Bottomless pit. Uh, Well, I mean, but just know that that money is in a lot of things that we, you guys do, not me, you. No. You. Sure. You. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. You. Okay. Not me. No, Artists not and me. art. I could separate it like a motherfucker. Sorry about it. Give Mo- me all the blood money. What's the What's the art money in this particular fashion? Sure. And the artist would be that. You're disgusting. Yeah. Okay, I want to let you know that. I am, but I'm not, you I'm should not, gonna... not be celebrating what Come you're doing on. right there. I will. Have a little softer stance on the fact that maybe, <laughs> maybe if we were to start snooping around, you know, and people tweeting me is... Uh, Maybe the most fascinating thing because they're the largest shareholder in Twitter. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, we found that out when Elon went to buy it. And then the kingdom of Saudi Arabia came out and said, no, thanks. And then they left and was like, holy shit, Saudi Arabia owns Twitter? We had no idea. And then he starts snooping around. It's like, oh, yeah. Is <laughs> anyone else talking about this? Is anyone else doing No. This? What are you talking about? That's probably why we're getting killed right now on the internet because we're the only people talking about it and we're assholes and we're justifying terrible things that have been done in other countries. We're not. What we're justifying is the fact that you need to not attack just the athletes for this if you're going to fucking attack people for this. Let's go ahead and go after the companies that are worth billions and trillions of dollars then if we're going to do this. I can't mean, watch YouTube either. It's on YouTube. Can't support it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Fuck! Be, oh, no. Can't so do it. I, maybe I we am. can't do anything. How about one billion to commentate? Yeah, I think he'd take it. I'll, I'm not tweeting anymore. Either. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting, though, and I think this is a good thing for our, to happen in our country, and a good thing to happen at this time because everybody feels good whenever they're speaking for what they believe is right. That is why I don't hate on people grandstanding and all that shit because I genuinely believe that a lot of the people that say the things they say truly mean that and they in their souls they feel as if they are 100% right and then whenever you open your eyes a little bit you realize like oh this isn't the only thing that's happening in this situation then if they choose not to get mad about everything people probably start feeling bad they're like well if I can't be bad at everything so I just got to pick and choose it's a wild time and we're going to learn more about everything than we had ever wanted to I assume and if I was Liv or Phil or any of them that were getting questioned at those press conferences yesterday by people in Nikes holding their iPhones driving to the thing and tweeting during it I mean it would be hard not to just be like what are you even so i can't get a payday for my family and my life and you are basically supporting a company and companies that have 
taking money and do things in a fashion that is probably less than what you intend for our world to live. And maybe this will be actual change, though. Maybe we will make actual change. You know what I mean, Ty? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I doubt it, but we'll see. Hopefully. No, maybe we Hopefully. will. Hopefully. That's what Gonzo is, said. This is actual... Well, well mm -hmm. Gonzo. Gonzo. What happened with him? Gonzo, quite a guy. Joining us now is a man who knows all about money. And I don't know if he's been watching us talk and thinks that we're idiots or thinks that we're playing a dangerous game, which I assume a lot of people are thinking we're doing <laughs> on the other side. I just, I think it's fascinating that the athletes are the only ones being attacked. And I don't appreciate that. I don't like that. Coming from an athlete, they've worked their asses off. They've probably made something out of nothing. Billy Horschel, this guy, not there, his PGA tour. Mm -hmm. Guy's dad was a construction worker. He gets a chance to change the tra uh, trajectory of his entire life. His family tree changes with his success. And then people want to attack that, but they won't attack the companies that are hoarding up the 0.00001% of the world that we're all pissed off about. It's just interesting how quickly people can get brainwashed into attacking one thing, and then the rest of the world just kind of goes by the wayside with the sleight of hand. That's just something I think we should maybe talk about. And we're a sports show, and this is sports, yep. that's right. and that's why we're able to talk about it. Hell yeah. Joining us now is a man who was an agent was front office for the Packers, has negotiated contracts, knows the ins and outs of basically all sports. I think he started in tennis. Ladies mm. and gentlemen, Andrew Brandt. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, we're gonna talk about football and team sports, but you bring up such a great point. Golfers, tennis players, they don't have collective bargaining agreements. They don't have guaranteed contracts. They're like independent contractors. So what we see now with this LIV golf tour is real competition for free agents because these guys are free agents, so they can play where they want. Now we have the U.S. Open saying, we don't care where you play. You can play for us. So the PGA has some limitations here. They're really at an inflection point on how they're going to deal with this because once they start saying, you can't play here, you can't play there, one, there's a well-funded tour that's an option that people can say, screw you, we're out. Number two, you know my saying, there will be lawyers. So if they try to restrict play beyond the PGA, A, there will be lawyers, and B, guys getting these huge money from the LIV golf tour are just going to say, all right, we're out. Just like Kevin Na has, Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, they're getting these $200, 125000000 million payouts. They're like, who needs the PGA? Well, especially if you can go play in the majors and build your legacy. And I love exactly. the fact that you've been able to join us from a business side. And we'll talk about team sports. Obviously, we'll get into that. But we started snooping around. And I didn't know this. And I don't think a lot of people knew this. But it turns out, like, bad people who have a lot of money or bad people in the past who have done things that are very bad. And I'm, it, I'm not just talking about this particular situation. I'm talking about around the entire globe who have a lot of money. Uh, are like silent investors in a lot of companies, like a lot, like a lot, like a lot of companies, a lot of them, Andrew, the ones that we use every single day. Why do you think it's the athletes that are taking it on the shin so hard about being morally bankrupt and not all these companies that are making billions and billions and billions of dollars while being celebrated for another round of funding that is probably coming from maybe some money that isn't necessarily, you know, squeaky clean how, how, how come that happens you think it's a great question i think there's always a favoritism of bias for the corporate side rather than the player side i've dealt with this forever you sort of see this all the time listen we're going to talk about the browns with watson in a minute but their owner jimmy Haslam, was dragged into court years ago for a year about some duplicitous practices of moving money around in his truck stops we sort of lost track of that and in terms of saudi money Pat, you know this, there's Saudi money all over the English Premier League. There's Saudi money all over the most, most expanding sport in the world right now, Formula One. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before Saudi money comes to American sports. There's just a limited amount of billionaire bidders for these big teams. We're going to talk about the Broncos. But it, at some point, people are going to want that wealth. And I know we can politically talk about where that wealth is coming from and what's happened before, but that's going to happen. There are a lot of 
sacred parts of sports that aren't going to be sacred anymore. And how come, is it just because this one is outright openly just Saudi Arabia funding it that the players are getting attacked? Like, I didn't know about the Premier I just learned about the Premier League. I knew about Disney and Uber and Live Nation and Twitter and everything that basically people do every single day of their life. I knew that. I didn't know about the Premier League. I didn't know about anything else. And you know what? Today's a good day for us to Take a stand and say we're not doing it anymore. We will watch no more Premier League soccer games. Oh, nope, no. nope, done. Nope. We yeah, won't do it anymore. Me either. I won't either, guys. Done with it. AJ! Yeah. I mean, speaking of soccer, you're going to watch. <laughs> speaking of soccer, you're going to watch the World Cup? That's in Qatar. Same kind of funding operation. So this is something that's oh, no. happening around the world. I think what happens with the Can't sport, watch it! We're going to win it this year! I can't <laughs> yeah, watch it! This is unbelievable! I think Phil Mickelson, you know, has some bad PR with some of the stuff he said. And oh, yeah. that kind of that kind of gets into this whole thing. And that sort of clouds the feeling about how we feel about it. But listen, Phil Mickelson's getting two hundred million dollars from these people. Of course, he's going to turn his back on the PGA. Of course, he's going to promote what's going on there. That is life changing wealth. Not like he didn't have it before. But well, man. This is a whole new league of wealth we're talking about compared to the PGA. Allegedly, he did have it at a couple of different stages of his life. And yeah. then... Maybe he handed it back. Yeah, and then he did. Money line. Yeah, they did, and now it's back. And then, by the way, who knows what's going to happen next. Yeah. The way he was dressed. Yeah, The way he right. was dressed, I mean, we can never guess. But that's for him to deal with, not for us. I just don't like the fact that the athletes are the only ones taking on the shin when this is a big thing. And it might be because of the PR. And we're not saying we agree with any of this. I'm not saying we agree with anything that has been done, said, or the actions. We're just saying it seems a bit hypocritical to only attack a couple people when it's been happening, as you said, for a long, long time. Now, let's get to the NFL, which has no Saudi money. Nope. That's right. Nope. None. Okay. No Saudi money in the NFL. Right? So far. So far. <laughs> Easy, Andrew. Please. <laughs> Andrew, no, no, none of that. But um, the Broncos get purchased by another member of the Walmart family. Now, another member, this is direct descendant, I believe, Robson Walton. Stan Kroenke is uh, in-law, I think, or cousin. I'm not 100% sure. They're two of the top three wealthiest owners in the NFL right now, the Walmart family, with Tepper in there at Carolina. There's only going to be more and more money dumped into the NFL, like you said. If the commanders go, any of the other teams go up for sale. What are your thoughts on new money coming into the league? and what exactly does this mean? And I think $4.65 billion for a team that has Russell Wilson at the helm and the Broncos fan base that is so loyal is a great deal. And am I wrong in thinking that? Yeah, $2.275 billion from David Tepper was the most recent sale. This basically doubles it, Pat. So now we're at four six five, and you just mentioned it. The two most recent sales in the NFL, the Panthers and the Broncos, now represent the two richest owners in the NFL. So we see a pattern here. The biggest money is coming out. The NFL, unlike the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, does not, I repeat, not allow corporate ownership. They don't allow private equity. So they have reduced the number of bidders to individual billionaires, and they came out of the woodwork for this sale, and it was vetted down to three or four groups, and the Waltons win. So it's the Walmart family, as you mentioned, the brother-in-law of Stan Kroenke, who's married to Ann Walton, the first and third highest wealth owners are now in the Walton family. So Walmart is two out of three for the NFL most rich owners to own these franchises. It tells me the bottom line is the bottom line. Like NFL owners, when they look at who's going to join them at the table, they're looking at resources. You can talk about all the other stuff, but this guy brings tremendous resources. I was told on the Tepper purchase that there were higher bids than the 2275. Huh. There was potentially a 25 bid, but they were leveraged. They were debt. David Tepper could quote unquote write the check for 2275. Now, can Rob Walton write a check for 465? Maybe he's worth 60 billion, but none of these other bidders could even come close to writing a check for that amount. So you're asking what the NFL looks for in new owners? It's pretty clear right now. The bottom line is what's their bottom line? Allegedly, he can just write a check for that. That is a big deal and why he was chosen. Go ahead, AJ. Andrew, something that we talk about all the time on here is the salary cap. And we say, oh, it's not real. And people tell us, oh, but you, you kick the can down the road, you eventually have to pay. But we haven't really seen a team have to pay. Like, What are we seeing right now with the salary cap? Let's talk about the Rams. We talk about the Donald deal. He's getting a 33 average over the next three. That's 
quarterback money. That's impressive. He goes from 45 over the next three years to 100 million over the next three years. Good deal. Like, like wow. And then the question gets to what you asked, Age. What are the Rams doing? And here I'm going to give you a little salary cap 101. You guys ready? And there's mm-hmm. a quiz here mm-hmm. too. Okay. Quiz. What they do is something called cash over cap. In other words, they can pay extraordinary amounts of cash yet stay under the cap. Stay with me here. Signing bonuses are prorated for cap purposes. So if you give a guy a bonus, it's prorated over the life of the contract. You keep the first year number low, you keep the salary low, and the cap goes up in later years. But you're staying under the cap while giving out a lot of cash. Now, cash-rich owners like Kroenke, like Walton will to come, like Jerry Jones, they can do this. Other markets can't. But here's what happens. Let's take the Matthew Stafford contract, AJ. $60 million bonus this year. Repeat, $60 million bonus this year, five-year deal. So cap charge over five years is $12 million a year. Okay? Salary is $1.5. So $60 million bonus, $1.5 salary in 2022. Right? Question. 13.5. Okay. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. You got that. Here's the second question. Pretty good, though, yeah. What is the Matthew Stafford cash number for 2022? 1.5. 61.5. Fuck. 60, because he got the signing bonus plus the 1.5. That's all I okay. meant. <laughs> Andrew, is that because the owner has the cash to write that check? Exactly. Now, what is the cash over cap number? For just one player, Matthew Stafford, in 2022. Well, you do 61 and a half minus 13 and a half. Correct. Thank you. So that's what? 48. Beautiful. $48 million. So let's just let's just be clear on Pretty this. Good. Stan Kroenke has just paid Matthew Stafford $48 million cash over cap. One player on, on a team of 60-something players. One player has a cash over cap figure of $48 million. So how do you stay under the cap? You do this proration cash over cap. You have one player making $48 million cash over cap. The problem is somehow if you separate from Matthew Stafford down the road, that $12 million a year of bonus accelerates when you separate. So say, I know it's never going to happen, but say in two years they're done with Matthew Stafford. Now they bring in how much cap, Pat? Uh, 12, 24, 36. Well, if it's two years from now, 48. Was okay. It if it's before the next, the th- third year. Five years, two years, third, whatever. <laughs> and again, it is a multitude of 12. Yeah, a multitude of 12. 36, yeah. right. 36 million, that would be okay. dead money. So this is the risk you're doing. Now at the Packers, as you know, AJ, I didn't do a lot of this. One, because we were a small market without tremendous cash flow. Two, I wanted to protect the future. I knew Brett would retire. We had to protect for Aaron. But this is something teams with a lot of cash flow can do. There's been talk at league meetings over the years. I sat in this. We've got to put a cap on cash over cap. Right? Understand? We wanted these small market owners wanted to get together and say, we need a cap on cash over cap. And then the Cronkies and Joneses of the world will say, no way. Yeah, hold on. Because if you're a team, if you're a fan, you want your owner to be cash over cap king here. That's why this new money coming into Denver and these other places is so massive, right? Right. So now we get to your question. Is the cap fake? It's not fake, but there is a loophole within the cap system that's not in the NBA, that's not in the NHL, where you can do proration. Proration is the magic for teams that are struggling with the cap. They simply push out the cap, add voidable years to the end, which are dummy years just for proration purposes, and they can pay way over the cap. So it's you have to understand this. Cash is hard, cold cash, right? We get that. Love cap it. is not cash. Cap is accounting. That's all cap is. It's filing. Cap is accounting. That's all it is. It's just so, how it's filed, how the money is filed, it's basically. It's just accounting. It's not. So when so they it's fake. Here, so it's we. I, you, wait, Andrew. Wait, Andrew. What you just said to me, by the way, and I think I passed most of your questions. The sixty-one and a half. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. But what you just said, 
I cannot wait to regurgitate to somebody in a situation that'll probably be on camera when they bring up the salary cap being fake. I'm like, well, you don't understand the game, okay? You don't understand the cash ever cap. So it's only real basically to the owners that don't want to do the cash ever cap or have the ability to do so. Correct, who don't want to push out problems into the future if they're going to be problems, right. And they're only problems if you cut ties with said player before end of voided years where you're prorating everything. And this has happened to the aforementioned Rams, who counted $21 million on their cap this past year for a guy playing for the Detroit Lions named Goff. Matthew Stafford made $20 million last year. Jared Goff counted $21 million. That wasn't cash, but that was accounting. That hey, that's, hey, that $36 million we threw out there for Stafford yes. if in two years, is that all in one year? If you cut them before June 1, you take the medicine. If you cut them after June 1, they would be 24 that year and 12 the next year. Oh, so 66% first year, 33% on the last? Yes. So this is what goes good, on with cap <laughs> management. Hopefully I've explained it sort of. Yeah, yeah you did. That was amazing, Andrew. We should have had you on, what, like a year ago? Yeah. <laughs> I was yelling this into the clouds like the last year and a half, two years, and they actually did an entire segment on NFL Network to debunk what we were starting, basically screaming. What's the biggest myth in football currently? And Tom Pelissero, boom. People saying the salary cap is a myth, or isn't real, <laughs> is a myth. Let me tell you why. And he did an entire thing, and it was like, now people showing up in my mentions like, you're lying, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, you just, you empowered me so much right there, Andrew. I don't know if you know that. I hope you know that. I appreciate it, Pat. Let me no, I appreciate you, it. Let me show you the other example, though. And this is the San Francisco 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo. So year one of that contract, Garoppolo made cash about $40 million. The 49ers flush with cap room a few years ago. They allocated almost $40 million in cap. In other words, they didn't do a bonus that's proratable. They did it through roster bonus, not prorated, big salary. So now when they move on from Garoppolo this year, which they will do through trade or release, there's hardly any dead money, like a million dollars. But their team so, that year stunk, right? When he signed over there, when he got traded over there, they weren't good, right? Well, he signed there, he got traded, then they did a big deal. They had cap room, they used it. Now when they get rid of him, they have no remaining dead money. And that's another way to do it. So is the salary cap real? It just depends. With these big market teams that keep pushing it out, it's really a future thing. When people at the Packers, AJ, ask me all the time, can we do this? Can we do this? Mike McCarthy, can we do this? Can we do this? I'd say we can do anything. We can do anything in the world if all we care about is this year, right? That's the point. We can do anything. You know, we can do anything if all we care about is right now. And that's been the Ram strategy for a couple of years now. But if we care about the future, and again, I was concerned Brett was going to retire. We need a good team around Aaron, all these kind of things. I was not pushing a lot of money out back then. But now the Packers are because Aaron's in a, in a limited time frame. And the Packers are getting $200 million a year in real estate. Yep. Well. <laughs> Yeah, that too. Yeah, 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 that absolutely <laughs> helps. With no owner, they seem to be, the capital seems to be flowing into there. So I'd assume uh, Guta Kuntz and Murphy are like, hey, I think we could potentially do a little, because they made an offer to Devontae. This is coming out through Aaron Rodgers chit-chatting about his relationship with Devontae Adams and how he feels about him leaving. He said, like, you know, me and Devontae talked a lot about how much longer I'm going to play and my thoughts and where he wants to put his family and everything like that. And we even made an offer that was uh, maybe more compelling mm -hmm. than the offer that the Raiders have. You're saying, I think, from listening to you, the ability to do that is because they have so much cash on hand that they can potentially dabble into that world because of the Green Bay Packers having no ownership and just another round of money for nothing they, right, just, yeah, they collected yeah. like sell more million, stock just like doing nothing plus the real estate so we might see teams like green bay or other teams do this or you think the old school teams will remain the old school teams i think teams with quarterbacks like aaron Rodgers are going to keep doing this obviously there's a massive difference when you're playing with a rookie quarterback and the packers know if, even if they have a huge dead number on aaron coming up they're going to have Jordan Love at a very low number, so their quarterback cap number is not going to be huge with Jordan Love, even with Aaron's dead money. 
I think that really just depends on the team. You know, and let me just say, Pat, the Devonte thing, just I continue to wonder about that. I just don't get it because as I know better than anyone in my 10 years, they're the most proactive team signing up core players early on than anyone. And they signed up Kenny Clark and they signed up Jared Alexander and they signed up all these uh, Bakhtiari. For some reason, they didn't prioritize Devonte Adams till the end, until the Raiders got involved, I think. So something was off there. We focused on, does Aaron have a problem with the Packers? I didn't think we focused on, there's something going on between Devontae and the Packers. For two years, they didn't get a deal done, which is so out of line for the Packers. So mm-hmm. There's Come a backstory on, going on there. There's a backstory with Devontae and the Packers that we don't really know. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, we'll see. Eventually, yeah, I don't know. It is a kind of a unique situation, but I wanted to pivot to uh, Rusty Harden. He's Deshaun Watson's lawyer. Are you surprised a little bit? At how vocal he's been, like what he, the different statements he's been making. Yeah, there will be lawyers. This one's really loquacious. This guy. Loquacious? <laughs> What's that mean? What does that mean? I'm writing that one down. That means glib. That means outspoken. That means doesn't care what he says in the media. He's been around so long. And loquacious. I don't get it. You know, I would not be saying anything. I would think him talking about uh, happy endings as kind of normalizing it, that doesn't help any case. He's mentioned. <laughs> It was even mentioned in the latest filing that went on yesterday, and I knew that would be once they put that out there. Listen, AJ, I've been pretty clear on this. I don't understand what's going on here. Uh, We've been dealing with this for 18 months. We're going to see discipline, as as my colleague Albert Breer said the other day, maybe in July. But this one bugs me because I can get, signing a guy who's maybe had some character issues or had some bad things going on in his life as a player on your team, just a player. But the Browns made him the face of the franchise. The Browns gave him the best contract in the history of football. The Browns gave him the most secure contract in football for a guy facing this, for a guy that even with the 22 lawsuits, a pattern where, let's just put it as nicely as possible, where he sought massages wanting them to work on his private parts. I mean, this is something like, really? This is the face of the Browns? And with the Trevor Bauer two-year suspension, with new information, dribs and drabs coming out almost every day, I have a hard time seeing him get on the field this year. I I do. I just think, like, really? The NFL trying to appeal to women, the NFL trying to, uh, precedent of Roethlisberger, precedent of Ezekiel Elliott, precedent of Ray Rice indefinite suspension after the video, like, they're going to put him on the field this year, even for a couple games? I'm having a hard time seeing that right now. Andrew, and I think um, as somebody who has represented the league before, worked there, and AJ I know feels this way, and every like the NFL is filled with very, very, very good guys who do very, very good things for their communities, for their families, for everything. I mean, large majority of guys in the NFL – end up being great in the cities that they play for and in the communities that they came from and everything like that. This, the more and more that comes, the New York Times article yesterday was disgusting. Like that, that's predatorial shit, like preying on people. The NFL, I don't know how anybody wants that to be a representative of our league, you know? And obviously these are all allegations and there's gonna be 24 trials and everything like that. But this is not good for anybody that's ever been associated with the NFL to have this person associated right now. I don't understand how it's gone on for so long. I don't understand how we haven't had the the punishment, the exemption list or whatever. And to your point, I don't understand how he became the highest paid. It's not good for the NFL, Andrew, because these are very terrible things that are being, you know, accused in uh, like 20 Four of them, 66 women in 17 months, allegedly. A lot of them not choosing the press charge. It's like, this is insanity at this point. I was looking for the white whale, you know, for years. Who's going to be that guy? Not Kirk Cousins three years. Who's going to get that fully guaranteed, fully guaranteed, just like NBA, Major League Baseball, fully guaranteed five, six-year deal in the NFL? Is it going to be Russell Wilson? going to be Aaron Rodgers? Is it going to be Pat Mahomes? It's this guy. It's this guy. This is the guy who's this the white guy, whale. Browns. This is the guy who's got a fully rock solid two hundred thirty million. Oh, 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 oh! Follow up. Is there any voids in that? Because allegedly, uh, what's being talked about, and I don't know if you've seen the contract inside and out. I don't even know how that works. Why are people leaking people's contracts? I don't know. Like, let alone this. But 
just in general. It feels like Florio has the contract before that thing signed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because Florio has been doing a lot of work in the NFL for a very long time. People are talking about maybe a void to this deal because the Browns didn't know about the 24th accusation, which immediately brings out everybody on the internet going, uh, 23 is fine, but 24 is not. And I think the reason why that is a thing is because the Browns wanted full transparency. And if anything on top of that was added, it was something they'd not expect or know had happened. And they feel like they'd been lied to Deshaun Watson. Maybe is that what you're hearing? And is there voids in every contract? I think, isn't there? No, this is, this contract's different. I was told, and actually by a reliable source that this contract had protections far beyond other contracts for the player. In other words, it looked like this contract was written by the agent for Watson. Again, the the, the Southern yeah, teams, this is a kid from the South, the Saints and Panthers and Falcons were in this and the Cleveland Browns were out. Well, how did the Cleveland Browns get back in? It's the contract, $230 million, 46 a year, fully guaranteed. What I am told about his his misconduct is that what has happened with these accusations will not affect any kind of void of suspensions for void of guarantees for 2023 for any of the contract based on what's happened. So any anything that happens new is going to affect potential future guarantees, but not for 2022 or 2023. It could affect 24 through 26. So 22 and 23 are completely rock solid. 24 through 26, if he gets in new problems of misconduct, then they can go after some guaranteed money. But like you said, if the team was going to say, which they're not because they're all in on Deshaun Watson, hey, this new information in the New York Times, we didn't know about this. Come on. Come on. It's the same pattern of the 22 lawsuits. And the 23rd lawsuits, where he brings his own towel, you know, all the stuff. It's the same pattern. 66 so, different massage therapists in 17 months. Alleged. These are all alleged, by the way. And Deshaun has um, answered, I believe, these, uh, the new allegations by posting song lyrics on his Instagram story, basically saying, like, what they're saying about me isn't true. Mm -hmm. And I guess Deshaun has stood in the pocket of defense saying, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. I'm very surprised that it's gotten to this point for all parties, aren't you? They, this is classic settle, move on, like long time ago, right, isn't it? Or in alleged it was Deshaun that was like, no, we're not doing that, mm -hmm. we're not doing that. And now I have to wonder, hindsight, how they're all feeling on how we got to this point. Yeah, I really think so. And I, and I continue to focus on the contract because it has ramifications. Steve Bashotti at the league owners meetings was, was sort of bemoaning this contract because he's in the crosshairs. Why couldn't Lamar Jackson walk in and say, I want that and better? 250. I've had a better career. I have no things in my past like this. And Steve Bashotti, I mean, if the owners try to, I, I know they're going to try to distinguish this. Oh, it was different unique circumstances, all these kind of things. Well, why? Yeah. And you have to fund future guarantees. Again, back to the cap, Pat, any future guarantees have to be funded by the owner. So there's 180 million of future guarantees funded by the Haslam's right now. In a holding, right? Is that get interest? Or in is an that just, escrow. In an escrow. Is there interest on that? Does the owner get that or the player? Yeah, who gets that? The escrow? Yeah, who gets a percentage? I don't know the answer to that. But I can tell you this, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, up for contract next oh, yeah. year. 300 M's. Uh -huh. no, can the Bengals do that, though, Andrew? Can the Bengals the pay Brown, that much? The, the Brown family owning the Bengals? They don't have 100 million, 80 million. They don't no. have it sitting around to put an escrow. The Spanos family that owns the Chargers, they're family-owned business. They don't have 180 million put in escrow. Jimmy Haslam has put notice to the rest of the owners on things they can't even do. So if I'm Justin Herbert's agent or Joe Burrow's agent, hey, give me that. They're like, we just can't. Sorry about it. Percentage. So then you go back to the NFL and you get rid of the funding rule. If you get rid of the funding, oh, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. And for this player, that's what just continues to to hit me. 
for this player yeah. of all players. In this situation, at this time, this in society. Wild. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Andrew, when you look at Aaron Rodgers' contract, he mentioned yesterday that although it's a three-year extension, it's basically a play one year and then kind of reassess and see where we're at after that. Do you think the Packers are aware of that and understanding like that that's the situation or in their heads are they thinking like, hey, we have Rodgers for the next three years? Because with how this was signed, like if he were to retire, let's say after next year, would that kind of put them in like a very messy situation with the cap? They were in a bind. They were way behind. They were looking. Yeah, it. here's the thing with Aaron's contract. I never believed this reports about 150 for three or 200 for four. Huh. It's a one year, $42 million deal. Really? And then, <laughs> and then there's all these options, right? So options. Apple it's one of the only contracts I've ever seen, Ty, where dead money goes up, not down. So if they exercise these options next year, then you have more proration, more dead money going forward. So I think it's a really a one-year commitment on both sides. And then, like always with Aaron, I think he said this, we'll see, right? We'll see. We'll see what happens after this year. We'll get together. Are they going to exercise those options? Are they going to redo it? But right now, it's one year, $42 million for Aaron, and then we'll see what happens later. I mean, that's where we are with Aaron. Go ahead, AJ. Andrew, how do you think they, they patch things up there with Aaron in the front office? I know he came out what yesterday and said how like the relationship's growing, they communicated. Like, Do you think that was like a smooth process? Yeah, I don't know how smooth it was. I talked about this a couple years ago, and I've talked about it before, is that you know when I was there, as you know, AJ, we had Ted Thompson. Ted was not the greatest communicator. Uh, he was an incredible, elite, elite talent evaluator, and he wanted you so bad. He wanted you so bad, and he got you. Fifth overall pick, oh, AJ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baby, Ted Thompson. Ted Thompson said, give me Ted. that fucking hawk. Hour two <laughs> wrapping up. We'll see you in about six minutes on the other side. Big guest, big convo. Sorry about it. Go ahead. So he wasn't the greatest communicator. He had me at John Schneider, at Reggie McKenzie, communicating to all the agents and players. And Brian was his Ted disciple, Brian Gutekunst, and maybe he didn't have the best communication skills and in releasing all these players Aaron talked about. Or the resume, right, of Ted Thompson, which is another thing. Yeah, I mean, he grew up at his feet, but he didn't have the chops that Ted had in terms of skins in the game. But he learned. He learned. And, you know, Aaron was always a favorite of ours when, when he came in at the front office. He was easy to talk to. He was someone that we all knew and got to know a long time. And Brian was relatively new. Uh, so I think that's progressed. I really do. I think... That's a nice thing to see. It's nice to see Brian have that relationship with Aaron now. Whether that affects he continue playing after a year or not, or from now, who knows? But I think Aaron called out the front office of the, of the Packers, which is very kind of football guy oriented, dealing with scouting, bird dogging players, not into the whole communication thing all the time. And they improved that. And they improve that. And Brian has become, I watch him in, in press conferences. He's become a much better communicator. And I've known Brian since he was an area scout for us, you know, doing bird dog in the Southeast. He is now a good communicator, which he wasn't before. Kudos to him and Aaron for pushing them that way. It's great those guys are getting along better. It's good for the future of the Packers, I think, as a whole. And I think that was what Aaron was almost saying. That's why people are asking, like, what does Jordan Love think about this all? And I think if Jordan Love had any business acumen at all or just brain at all, he's like, all right, if Aaron wants to take all the bullets for this and this is going to change the future of how this of this organization's run, like, I think we're all pretty happy about that. You know, I think we're just progressing into the future in a different way teams are going to be run. And the fact that Aaron did not have a say for that long, I was mind blown by it. Just strictly because I, when I got dropped into the NFL for no reason at all, I didn't even know how to do the job that I was drafted to do. And I got to ride the coattails of very good people. And it was a joke that I was even there. Peyton Manning was able to do, like, if you wanted a guy on a team, like, okay, guys on a team. If he didn't want a guy on a team, all right, that guy's no longer on the team. If you wanted to have a different practice or have a different workout, it's like, hey, this is our guy. We are going to go as this guy goes. One assistant coach who had been on the team coaching since the beginning of Peyton's runs, like, hey, we're just here until the wheels fall off. You know, whenever <laughs> we're just here until as long as this guy will let us be here. And whenever he's done, we'll be done here. I, I did not, exp I just assumed that was happening everywhere. 
You know, because that would make sense. Why would you not want one of the best football players of all time's brain whenever you're allowed to have it and some other teams can't have it? That never made sense to me, Andrew. Maybe you might know why a little bit more it happens in other teams, but why was that ever a thing, you think? I don't know. The Packers have sort of been, we scout, you play. You know, it seems like that's been for a while. But I know back in the day with Brett, it wasn't so much, hey, Brett, what should we do? It wasn't so much, hey, Brett, who should we play? It was just kind of cluing him in now and then. And, uh, you know, like just things said when he stops in the front office and parks in one of our offices. And I think Aaron probably needed more of that. I mean, it's funny because I think about Jordan Love. If Jordan Love starts playing next year, it seems like an eternity, right? But it would be the exact same waiting period that Aaron went through. And those three years were tough, Pat, because... You know, I had to deal with Brett. Like, you know what it's like coming into work every day and sitting with your replacement? That's not great. And then on Aaron's side, not Aaron, but his camp would be like, is he ever going to play? Yeah. Is he ever going to play? And I don't know what's going on with Jordan Love's camp, and I don't know what's going on, you know, Aaron. Jordan Love much. has been dropped into <laughs> worse yeah, situation not great. of all time. And we've tried to but, separate it. Like, hey, Jordan's probably a cool guy, but this is a nightmare of a situation for that guy. But, because, you know, when, when Brett was in Mississippi, those couple But he's getting paid a lot of money to play football, so don't have feelings, you. You know what I mean? That's how people feel. But you remember, AJ, when Brett was, you know, stayed away in the offseason, we saw Aaron. We had two offseasons <laughs> where, where it was Aaron's team, like from March to July. It was Aaron Rodgers was our quarterback. And we had guys like Greg Jennings and Donald Driver and James Jones. He'd be coming up to the office and like, this guy. Like, this guy. This guy is for real. Hey, this like, hippie guy. Yeah, yeah this guy from, from Northern Cal, California Cool. He's for real. Like, he's got moving skills. He's got arm strength. He's intelligent off the charts. He just doesn't take things too seriously. And that's when we kind of knew. You know, we kind of knew we could turn the keys over to this guy in the bullpen. Mike McCarthy. Now, I like this guy down here. <laughs> hey, Brett, you want to keep causing problems? No problem. We'll send you some footage from OTAs, pal. This fucking, <laughs> this hippie guy has just been sitting in your room. Kin sling. He's been slicing and dicing AJ Hawk all fucking. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, that's huge. That's a huge advantage, you know? And I assume they were yeah, ex that's... excited about that with Jordan Love, too. Like, hey, we get a chance to see that. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know if that's going on with Jordan. I mean, Aaron's only there for the mandatory. I don't know if that's going on with Jordan where they're saying, okay, we can turn it over to Jordan next year, the year after, whatever it's going to be, or we're going to have to do something else. Last question here, Andrew. We can't thank you enough for your time. Go ahead, Tone. Andrew, we talk about it all the time uh, in here because we always have this question. Um, in the one per club meeting, do the Packers get listened to or not because they do not have an owner? Yeah, this is my inferiority complex going to the NFL meetings every year. It was, a, you know, every team's got a paranoia. The commissioner of the NFL doesn't treat you the same as other teams. That was our beef. Like, since we don't have a billionaire sitting at that table, they're kind of like, you know, pat him on the back, pat him on the head. Say, hey, good old Green Bay. You know, you guys are great. What a story. You're in this little burg up in the northeast Wisconsin. Isn't that cute? We felt that. You know, we felt that. We felt like, hey, you know, we, you know it was great not having an owner for a lot of reasons. Great. Awesome. But when it got to that, it was like, yeah, feel a little second class here. Not having an owner at this table. Oh, so it doesn't matter either, huh? Like, hey, we want some more primetime games, maybe. Well, Jerry Jones, shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> shut up. Okay, we're getting every single one of them. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you think like Walton, Tepper, and them, who have a little bit more cash flow going into those meetings, will get a little bit more power? Who who runs those? Yeah, I think they will. I mean, again, it's politicking with the commissioner. It's getting with the owners that oh. have a lot of influence, like Kraft and Jones. Oh, over yeah. the Snyder's fucked. This pop but it, the bottom line is the bottom line is the team. Obviously, that didn't affect us being on primetime six times a year with Brett Favre and with Aaron Rodgers. You know, the bottom line is what's your team? What's your team like? Hey, we're lucky to have you join us every once in a while, man. You're fucking awesome. Your brain is great. You empowered me in thinking that salary cap is 100% <laughs> fake. And we appreciate you so much. How can people keep up with you a little bit more? Yeah, Andrew Brandt on Twitter. I do a newsletter every every week now, andrew-brandt.com. And I'm doing all these reels now on Instagram. Oh, yeah. oh. look at you, like the future. Well, where's Andrew Instagram? Brandt, oh. Andrew Brandt, too. I couldn't. Somebody Six stole months. the Andrew Brandt on Instagram. Meadows. Andrew Brandt, too. Yeah, but who? Yeah. Do you know who all is invested in those reels? Uh, uh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Brandt. <laughs> Andrew!
All right, we're going to get to a break. I'm about to piss my pants. Hour three is on the other side. We will have Kenny Beecham join us. YouTube legend in the NBA community. Can't wait to chat with him about everything going on in the NBA and more. His last tweet has 3,000 retweets. It's CJ McCollum and JJ Redick right before they bury Stephen A. Smith. Oh, yeah. The future of sports talk. Joining us in the third hour, plus your phone calls on the 500 phone line, one 833 4 We'll see you in about two and a half minutes. After death, what happens, Bill? What happens after death? I don't know. Um, I have no idea. But I know there's nothing that's mad at me. That's good. It's just nice. so stupid. Because he created everything. Or she. She. Well, definitely a she, because God doesn't take responsibility for his own actions. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what? You set me <laughs> You set me up. <laughs> no, I just I don't understand. Well. Like, yeah. If you just watch nature videos, you can't believe in a God that cares. Okay. You know what I mean? I watched this one one time, this fucking baboon or a little monkey. There was a baby gazelle, and they go after him if they can get him. And they fucking, he got it away from the mother, and the mother can't get rid of the thing. And he just fucking just ripped the thing and just started eating the thing alive as it was screaming in agony. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is, you made something that did that? Or like rabbits? Like their whole fucking purpose. It's just to be eaten. They have no fucking defense. Just fucking hopping around. <laughs> just complete jerk-offs, right? Just, and then they just like... The, their only survival is that we fuck so much. Well, we can, we can stay out in front. Like, they're literally designed to keep everybody else alive by being eaten alive. So you think there's some flaws potentially in the entire... No, I just think that, like, I think if there's a god, right? And he made all of this shit. Or she, right? Or they, or the deep state, man. I, I just think that, like, you know, he did what he did here, and he just moved on. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show here on this glorious Wednesday, June 8th, 2022, with 50K in free bets going to one good gambler on FanDuel. Oh. Hour three begins now. Yeah! To my left, your right, AJ Hawk, the Tops of Tables here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor, at Tone Diggs. What was I referring to right there? This is the biggest thing we've been a part of with FanDuel thus far on a sport that I and most know nothing about. Yeah, 50,000 to first place in free bets, uh, 100,000 overall to to all the winners of whoever hits the longest odds same game parlay or same game parlay plus today in the MLB. You're all playing for second because I already, I already No, won. no, no, no. I you got, so. no, you got no, to opt no. in. You got to go on FanDuel Sportsbook if it's available in your state. You got to opt in at the top. Okay, make sure you opt in. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then you place at least a $5 bet on a same game parlay or same game parlay plus for the MLB's games today. Mm -hmm. Today's any of them. Any of them. Any of them that are happening Take today. Your pick. A lot of baseball happening today. A lot today. of baseball games today. Is that every day? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. It's the best. Oh, thanks. Anyways, put together a same game parlay, and if you have the longest odds that hit, you will win 50,000 in free bets. Oh, Let yeah. me rephrase that. I'm going to hit the longest odds, same game parlay, mm -hmm. or same game parlay plus today, and I'm going to win 50,000 in free bets. You guys, though, for the rest, the next top 10, there's another 50,000 sure. free bets going out. So congrats to you guys on oh, that. No, thank well, you. Congrats to you because yeah. there's no way you're going to be hitting yours. Mm -hmm. I bet on – I counted while I was taking a pee there for the first time in like two hours. I can't believe I got through that last hour. Andrew Brandt was spitting <laughs> that fucking hot fire though. Yeah. I, I bet on 17 dudes that I've never heard of today to either hit a home run, <laughs> record a hit, or an RBI. Boom. Not a bad idea. And let's go, boys. I got, a, I got a plus $129,000 uh, odd per uh, parlay. Okay, you know how I, I bet 10 bucks on it. I win 12 grand or something yeah, like that. Not bad. 
Not only do I win that, I win 50K too in free bets because that's what we're doing today. We're betting on a sport we don't know much about. Joining us now is a man who knows a lot about a sport that is very huge on the internet. Oh, He's yeah. the future of NBA and sports talk. He just created something called Enjoy Basketball, which is for people who are tired of hot takes and negativity. That's us right here, pal. You can find him on Twitter and on YouTube at KOT4Q. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Beach. Hey, Kenny! Hey, what an intro, man. What an intro. I appreciate you guys having me. Hey, no problem. I enjoy your energy, your spirit, man. I'm excited to link up with you here. This should have happened a long time ago. Thank you for joining us. I think so, too. I've been, I've been following for some time, and I'm just... Checking my verify tab, waiting for the Pat McAfee follow back. I'm just waiting. <laughs> look on. Go ahead. Go look right now. Okay. All right. All right. I'm waiting. Here we go. And it is there. Yeah. <laughs> it is there. It is there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I thought I'd already followed you. I'd seen you on the internet. I knew exactly who you are whenever it showed up. Like, hey, would you want Kenny Beecham on the show? It's like, I think Zito asked me. I'm like, yes, I know of, of your work. I appreciate your work. And I like the fact that the future of sports talk feels like it's going to be much more positive and not hot takey. Now, let's go to your last tweet. I just checked 4,200 retweets or something like that, which is obviously colossal numbers on the internet. It was CJ mm -hmm. McCollum and JJ Redick, a picture of them about to destroy yeah. Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. looked defeated. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. We're talking head down, no confidence ass yeah. mm -hmm. Stephen A. Smith after what JJ Redick and CJ McCollum did. Kevin Durant actually quote tweeted the entire thing was like mm -hmm. oh is this what's happening on first take now i'll fucking come and check it out how do you feel about the way basketball is being covered and do you like the new players getting onto espn and the way everything's going on the internet i think it's good for all sports right now kenny i definitely love it um people like jj cj they're anti-hot take culture um, I do believe that for the past 10 years or so, as I was growing up, I was I would watch like the ESPNs and we're thinking that is the only way to enjoy a sport is to rank players, you know, and try to diminish these players. And now you get this new generation and this movement that we've been trying to start. And now you can just sit back and enjoy the game, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, and just take it for what it is, which is entertainment. What do you think of uh, what like Pat Beverly has been doing on ESPN going back and forth? And I think JJ and, and Pat and having them there is awesome. Also JJ's podcast too. Seeing these mm -hmm. NBA players actually like open up and feel comfortable is really cool. But you think Pat Beverly has a, a long future there at ESPN? I think he could. I think he recently said that um, he wouldn't go out of his way to do like a casting career afterwards, but he's built for it. He 100 percent is. If you have anybody that knows the X's and O's and just knows basketball deeper than like a casual fan, but can also keep it real. That's what Patrick Beverly has done. Um, he's got a nice future, but I think he still wants to get that championship eventually before he decides to do anything else. Hey, a lot of hot takes out of Pat. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Pat, definitely. Pat Bev there, the first day he was on ESPN, he trended for like 14 hours. <laughs> Chris Paul this is the thing. I, re I respect him a little bit more than Stephen A. Smith because he's the one guarding yes. Chris Paul. So the hot take matters a little bit more to me as an outsider. How do you how do you think that came to be, by the way, the hot take culture? Because you talked about it and you said you grew up on it. And I think mm -hmm. we all did as well. And it it was Cold Pizza. Yep. Yeah. Cold Pizza was a show way back in the day. Kenny, you might be too young. You look very yeah, no, young. You look damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what First Take is now. Literally, Cold Pizza oh. came became something, and then now it's First Take or whatever. That's like the evolution of it. But combat sports talk is almost mm. what became the thing. Why do you think that happened? Do you think it's because everybody loves just hearing why somebody else sucks? Do you think that's why it is? I think it's partially that. Um, I also think it's a way for people to get the attention that is necessary to grow in the business, right? If you, if I have a hot take about LeBron, who's one of the greatest ever, it's going to matter a little bit more than me praising him. You know, if LeBron has a bad game, like as a YouTuber, if you talk about LeBron's bad game, it's like your best performing video of the month. So when you think about it in that sense, the hot take culture is the way people get on to sports media. That's how it has been, but we're trying to change that. We're trying to change that. Yeah, we are, aren't we, Kenny? Hey, we, yes, are. we are. Hell yeah. You and me both. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Everyone um, loves a car wreck, though, right? Isn't that what on. people are tuning in to watch? It, it is. It is. Um, and I'm not saying there is no world for hot takes because I think there, there can be um, conversations about ranking players and doing things like that. But I think that we get to the point where it's too over the top, where it's like, man, you can say a lot of things about like Steph Curry, but you cannot deny the fact that he is great at what he does. And I think we get to the point where we start to diminish these careers and like that's the greatest shooter of all time. One of the greatest point guards of all time. He doesn't have a finals MVP yet, but who gives a damn? He's great at what he does. 
Hey, will you give me a fist bump right here? <laughs> Which way am I? Am I this way? Yeah, nope. to your right, right. To your right. Boom. Yeah. Boom. There we go. We're going to do it. Hey, we're going to do it. We're going to change the way sports are covered, Kenny. Let's do it. Definitely. Definitely Why not? Real for it. Hey, you crush on YouTube, dude. Absolutely crush. I enjoy watching your videos. Zito sent me a bunch. Uh, in in. Just you, you have such a spirit about you that is just uplifting. And I don't want to be a hot taker and bring you down at all. Celtics are dead, right? Oh, Celtics are yeah. completely Whoa. dead. Golden State's Whoa. about to just go ahead and run the table yeah. from here on yeah. out. Is that how you feel? Yeah. And is this, uh, is this the right two teams you think in the finals, Kenny? I think it is the right two teams from everything we've seen so far. Um, but I wouldn't go as far to say they're dead in the water, man. They, they had a template in game one. Obviously, you don't expect Al Horford to hit six of eight threes every single game. 26. But if you look at what he did from game one to game two, he's probably somewhere in the middle. He had like four points in game two. <laughs> I'm expecting more from him. I'm expecting more from Marcus. I'm expecting more from, from Derek White. Um, so I'm hoping they're not dead in the water because I want a competent and competitive series. Did you play ball? How'd you get into this? <laughs> so uh, my, my uncle used to say, like, those who can't play talk. Um, so oh. I played a couple years of high school, and then I realized – Dad is like a uh, five nine. My mom is like five one. Mm. Hooping is not really the future for me. So let's pick up a <laughs> microphone and just study the game and talk about it. How long have you been on? Ever since high school, you've been talking into microphones. How old? I've I've been talking into microphones. So it started off just as gaming, and it was like sporadic gaming. It was sports gaming. It was shooters. It was a lot of different gaming. And then I realized that people cared about what I was saying for some reason. Then it gravitated more than just like me, this microphone and this setup, and let's just talk all things basketball. You're killing it, man. Hey, happy for you. Yeah. Thank so you're you, what? You're you. you're five four and a half? No, no. I'm five eight. Oh, okay. Oh, hey. hey. I'm five eight. You know, uh, a lot of people don't believe it because I'm interviewing athletes who are seven foot. So I take pictures <laughs> next to them, yeah. and they think I'm five foot. It's like, no, I'm I'm a little bit taller than that, but obviously not NBA height. Um, I was tall enough and decent enough to make it the first two years of high school hoops but after that it was a wrap any was, nba guys uh show you love that really got you excited you know like any nba guys have seen your stuff and said hey this is really good i appreciate mm -hmm. that I, I assume that it gives you a nice jolt who who was it definitely definitely uh jj reddick um honestly gave me a ton of confidence over the last couple of years i don't even know how we linked up but he did a live show in in um new york a few years ago that he invited me to i've been on his podcast a few times him duncan robinson um, I used to do the series where I was interviewing NBA players, and I always knew, like, if they enjoyed the interview, they'll hit me back with a follow on Twitter. So I have, like, Rudy Gobert follow me, Jamal Crawford, Dwayne Wade. So I'm like, Ooh. if those dudes enjoyed our interview so much, I must be doing something right. Hey, happy Rudy survived that COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tough. yeah. Remember yeah. Rudy? Yeah. started the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, Rudy actually was the one that threw COVID into America. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. That's what he did. That was a tough time. That's <laughs> that a tough time. Hey, we COVID. had to do a lot of PR after that one. Yeah, COVID was a tough time for all of us, but Rudy Gobert really, there for like a week and a half, two weeks, he was public oh, yeah. enemy yeah. number one. Top. Because he was disrespecting the media. The yeah. media. Hey, you disrespect the media. They're not happy. Don't even think it. about it. This guy touched our microphones with COVID. That son of a yeah. bitch. We're all going to die now. Donovan Mitchell hates me. <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Kenny. Aside from the Celtics, obviously, they're probably going to win the final. Dang. I believe that you kind of feel the same way. But is this the most talented the NBA has ever been? It feels like every team, uh, aside from some of the veteran teams, have a guy that's like in his 20s that's already kind of a bona fide stud. Definitely. I think this is the most fun I've ever had as a basketball fan. I started watching in 2003-ish. Um, there's, like you said, an immense amount of talent, so much that I'm waiting for expansions to happen. I'm looking for the next two cities to get a basketball team because there is just so much talent. It seems like people are coming into the league younger and younger and becoming great. Luka immediately came into the league and was like an all-star player. Zion had to set out a season, but he came back and he was an all-star player. Um, and it's just, I think it goes back to like people realizing how great, how much work you have to put in to be great so like i have a cousin who started playing basketball like two years old and now he's like ranked here in chicago at uh freshman on varsity because they realize very early on that that basketball can be a ticket out of a lot of different places uh you're from chicago i uh i am so michael jordan greatest player of all time better than all time i got this one-on-one -on -one piece behind me i paid five thousand dollars for it to, oh to you're living people. well <laughs> Kenny. Yeah. Hey, five grand. <laughs> can't hide it. That's the greatest of all time, if you ask me. Um, but candidly, um, I was born in 96, so I didn't get to watch the two three-peats. But I, I know about them. Oh, so you've seen all the highlights. 
I've seen the highlights. You know, Hardwood Classic plays the full games, you know, during the offseason. So, you know, I've, I've seen a decent amount. Much better than LeBron. LeBron never, ever, huh, Kenny? Is this hot take Kenny, you excited? Yeah, you excited for LeBron to start a podcast? I'm excited for uh, the opportunity to be on LeBron's podcast. Right <laughs> okay. So, because you think that LeBron has a chance to be the greatest of all time, right? We don't know what his career is going to end up being. <laughs> uh, it's always that? hard when people ask me that. Um, I'm, I'm always going to go with my heart, and my heart says MJ just because of the six rings here. Um, but I always, to, to play it safe, I always say LeBron is the greatest player I have personally ever seen. Smart, Kenny. Yeah, that is that's smart. The way I, that's the way I answer that question 100% of the time. Go ahead, Ty. Kenny, you mentioned uh, LeBron. Anytime you do a video about him, you know, that's probably like the most viewed thing that you're doing. And Connor said how the, the league has so many good guys at this point. But do you ever get mm -hmm. tired of ba like casual fans only? Like there's the same seven guys you talk about who move the needle and then no one really gives a shit about anyone else. Like, do you ever get like caught up and like, oh, I'm just talking about the same guys over and over and over and over every single night? You know what I've done in a, or the community that we built have done a great job of just showing love on whatever videos. I did a video about Rudy Gobert and it was one of my top performing videos, you know? So like, I think there is an avenue um, for people that are deeper than the casual fan that only care about the top seven or eight guys. And those are the people I'm trying to cater to. I mean, there's 30 organizations and at least 25 of them deserve to be talked about one way or another. So I try my best to try to cover all things basketball. Which ones don't? No comment. Oh, oh thanks, like AJ. Smart. That's very smart. There's no reason to bring that up. What's this guy all yeah, about? Are yeah, we not trying yeah. to enjoy I'm basketball? Curious, on as a casual it's fan, I'm very curious, but I agree with you. I, I love Michael Jordan as well. Hey, you're in. <laughs> What? He's I'm from Ohio, though. Guy. Kind of. He's from Ohio, though. The home home state of LeBron. So yeah, kind I'm of the a opposite. Huge LeBron fan too. Yeah, me too. You can be both. You yeah. definitely I can just be don't. both. Well, not yeah. you. You paid five grand for a poster behind yeah. you. You know what I mean? That is the <laughs> that is the whole thing. Hey, enjoy basketball. Um, I looked at your YouTube. You got like mm -hmm. six pages, multiple six figure follow. I mean, it is. You are a weapon, dude. You, your work you. ethic, unbelievable. Your vision, incredible. I think enjoy basketball. This is the is this new? What is enjoy basketball? If you were to put it in terms, of, is that the community you're talking about with like a hundred thousand people? Correct. So um, enjoy basketball is a message that I've been sending for years. And AJ. Then, uh, one one day I was just like, hey, I talked to my people and I said, let's let's try to make it more than just a message. Let's let's try to build a community around it. Um, so it's really for the NBA fan that doesn't really care about the hot takes. It's for more one want to watch the basketball and just enjoy for what it is. We had our first merch drop and we sold out in three hours. We're hey, I man, good business. Um, yeah, like it's great. And we have a newsletter that we um, that we write three times a week. All things hoop with some of the best people in, uh, in uh, NBA Twitter. So, yeah, enjoy basketball is a real thing, man. And I, I think people are taking the message and running with it. That's awesome. I try to enjoy basketball as much as possible, except yeah. for whenever I lose yeah. an absurd <laughs> amount of cash on method of first basket. Uh, mm -hmm. tough. Who shoot, who's going to score first? You know, yeah. that's, there's so this many. Is the thing. This, this is why I like those bets, because you can be mad about it for five minutes and then you can enjoy the rest of the game, right? Like, yes. Oh, yeah. First basket well, is over, yeah. and now let's just sit down and, and, and watch hoops. Well, yeah, but then there's follow-up bets. Yeah. To the uh, now we're chasing. Now we're chasing. Yeah, now we're to, you know, Kenny. I mean, it's a full. I'm not a big. I'm not a big bet guy. So that first basket is about the extent of my my knowledge. Well, that's because that's because you enjoy basketball. Yeah. You know what I mean? that's, yeah, we are. You know, we're trying to profit off it, and we never do. Go ahead, Tone. Kenny, who's a player now? Like, who's the most positive player in the league? Like, the player that anytime you do a video about or anytime you talk mm. about, everyone is positive about that player, and like, and has the least amount of haters. You think? Wow, I, I, you Why know it, it changes, tough? right? Um, it's not John anymore after this this last playoff run. Uh -huh. um, he's got people to turn on him, and that's what it is. You will have a player that is young and good, and you make videos about him. I'll say Luca, and then you get to the point where Luca is leading his team to the conference finals, and now the teams that he beat, the fans of those teams hate him now. So there is no player that is like a hundred percent positive. Um, I would say Luca's probably the best thing. Trey Young during the run last year, Damn. he had New York against him. But other than that, everybody loved him. But it's hard, man. It's hard to maintain a bunch of love. Like even Chris Paul, one of the greatest of all time in the last two years, have had people turn on him. So I don't really know. Kenny, who's gonna win the uh, who's gonna win the finals? 
Uh, my original prediction was Warriors in six, and I'm going to stick to it. You son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> so I hope they go seven. Just enjoy bo- basketball, man. Yeah. Be positive. Yeah, Don't call Kenny, our guest, a son of a well, bitch. Well, I mean, he's not enjoying <laughs> basketball. He's just, you know, rooting for the Warriors. But whatever. It's fine. No, no, no. I'm not rooting for it. That's what? just what my, I predict is going to happen. Sounds like you are. Kenny, it's you okay know, to in, say Celtics are dead, dude. They're dead. They're but dead. you know, in February, when they were starting their turn, I went on to national TV and told the world that the Celtics are going to make a run. And I got laughed at by Shaq and Dwayne. Way. Fools. And here they are in the finals. So I want to kind of see them be successful so I can rub it in their face next yeah. time I see them. Yeah. Uh, realistically, right. five, nine, five, eight. Are, you're going to have to. Yeah. I mean, rubbing it in Shaq's yeah. face going to be tough. Step wide. Yeah. Last time I met Shaq, he put his head on my, my skull and just shaked it around. <laughs> Well, whatever is happening inside of that skull is incredible. We're very lucky to be on the same platforms as you. We appreciate what you bring to the sports world. And you know what? I mean, I followed you before this. I should have followed you a long time ago, dude. Appreciate you guys, man. This is is a blast. I'm tuning in um, very, very often. I appreciate you guys. Hey, no problem. Anytime you want to come back, you let us know. If you're doing any more merch drops. You let me know. If you need anybody to talk hoops, I'm the guy. You are the guy. It sounds like you're... All right, who's the most talented player in the NBA right now? Is it Kyrie Irving? Is in what's going to happen when he goes to the Lakers with LeBron? Are they just going to win the next four <laughs> oh. rings? Is it Kyrie Irving? He might be the most visually uh, pleasing player to watch for sure. I don't know <laughs> the if most the most optically talented. pleasing player, yeah. mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving. Yeah. It might be Kyrie because uh, ta- defense is talent to me, you know, and he ain't really got much of that. Um, but what, what was your second question? Hot take, kind of negativity there. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. He's going to read. We love Reed. Yeah, yeah. We love Kyrie. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we love you too, man. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have an incredible Wednesday. Can't wait to see the shit that you come up with next. Appreciate you, fellas. Enjoy the rest of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Beecher. Yeah, yeah. Kenny! $5,000 poster right over his head. Yeah. Jeez. Nice. Loves MJ. Painting or whatever. Yeah. It's one un- of one, he said. Unreal. Hey, he's got an, he is brilliant entrepreneur, that guy. Big, big fan of his. Doing work over there. Yeah. Six different accounts that are all killing. Yeah. I'll have a Who lot has the followers. time? Who has the time? Is it mainly like, is it like reaction videos? What is it? He puts things together. He puts stories together. Mm-hmm. React- I mean, he does everything. He is a very. He's a, he's a hustler. He's super a talent. Yeah. Super, super talent. Just like on the defense side of the ball. We yeah. agree. Mm-hmm. That's why Tatum's so good. Yeah, but he's losing. No, it's on one. Yeah. So we got five more games. Yeah. It's going seven. We already know that because the referees will just decide. Yeah, I was going to say Celtics might be dead. Yeah, well, Celtics the Celtics are. haven't lost a back-to-back in the entire playoffs. So. Well, they haven't played the Golden State Warriors true. yet. That's true. Steve Kerr is giving oops. Guys are getting hit in the face. I mean, it's a whole thing right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. But now we're, you know, we're in Boston now. So it's going to be pretty Uh-oh. rowdy tonight. No big deal. Uh, I've heard the rims are bigger there for Steph Curry in Boston. Oh. <laughs> really? Is that yeah. what they say? Yeah. Yeah, he says he walks into the garden and the hoop's just a little bit bigger. Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, they're not going to get those calls that they got last game. Well, they're, not, sure. they're not scared about getting any calls. No. Oh, them. they need them. No. Because the first game they didn't get them, and look what happened. What, you we think the refs back, are from Boston? We were down 15. No, they <laughs> they legitimately talked about Who are the, some the calls. Uh, Scott Foster. Which doesn't affect the game as much because the Warriors and the Celtics have a similar uh, record, and uh, Game Seven against the Heat was a Scott. They're going to be on him early, game. though. They're going to be on Draymond early. That's to make what sure I mean. Nothing gets out of control. Yeah, exactly. And they legitimately said that you know the calls that Draymond might have got called for a you know a charge or a block probably would go the opposite way uh, in Boston, which doesn't make sense to me. But that's how it works, I guess, in the NBA. You got to play against the third team that's out there. Uh huh. And that's the officials. Let's get to right. a break. On the other side, we answer some phone calls on a five energy phone line. Um, this has been a great. We're already two and a half hours into the show, AJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Insane. Yeah. Wait, Billy Horschel, was he fishing with his kids? Oh, yeah. Family, Family. yeah. And Big Billy. Nice connection. Great connection. He just won $2.1 million. He probably had a backpack with service in it. Yeah. Yeah. They're not catching shit. No. They were in a very, maybe a Starlink, but he was in a fishless area of the ocean. He was. Haven't caught a thing. It appeared. Out there for three hours. Not what it's about. They're probably waiting on us to get done with that so they can go out to where the fish are. Go Mm. deeper. Yeah. The noise probably kept the fish away of the call. Right. I seen a guy pull a fucking big old one out of the lake last Rock. night. Oh, oh really? Well, really? He, he had a 12 pound uh, largemouth bass. It it's hot. a record. It's a record. He pulled a record bass out. The so Rock. Bad. Also, Black Adam trailer out today. Awesome. Mm-hmm. How you so feel? good. Going to be the biggest Wait. movie of all time. Hell yeah. Dwayne was fishing? Mm. Yeah, in his Always. Johnson Farms. Yeah. That fish was claimed to be pregnant, but Dwayne said he only has females in his pond. Because he can 
regulate and control how many okay. fish are in there. So he know, put though. the biggest bass he could find in his own pond and then caught it? No, Still yeah, he's a it. part of the con uh, conservation conservation of Virginia and yes. the healthness. Okay. Uh, that's his pond. He Thank takes you. care of it. Come on, oh, what okay. do you do? Not, Tell I me you don't we know how fish Catch and release, dude. You know, a lot of ponds are stocked, pal. Thanks, too. But as we know from Jurassic Park, if you only have female fish or dinosaurs, they will find a way to procreate. No, not Johnson Farms. Mm, Just nope. telling you. Anyways, the Black Adam trailer is awesome. Go check it out. He's flying next to Tom Cruise in an F-14. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you want to do the IMAX for Black Adam again, like Top Gun? or Maybe. No. When's that coming no, out? No, 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 no. We don't ask Tom that. Cruise in the movie this summer? Let's see no, The Rock is in the movie. Let's see another but trailer he's before flying we next do to Tom. that. What do you mean? Well, I don't know, actually. the had a helmet on. was a fighter pilot. Yeah. I don't know if the fighter pilot that Black Adam punched out of the sky, the plane, mm -hmm. was necessarily... Could have been Rooster. Well, we know. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe. Not. It wouldn't be a but I don't US know if plane. it was accepted in Top Gun. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. I don't know if that particular pilot was Probably accepted not. in Top Gun. Probably some Mickey Mouse fighter. But I mean, Black Adam handled it. Didn't yeah. stoop down yeah. the level. No, of Black Adam a superhero. Yes. Yeah. If it was Maverick or Rooster, anti-hero. Definitely not Ooh. Top Gun Three. So well, he came back not. as a god. I believe is what I heard in the mm -hmm. trailer. Uh -huh. yeah. It's worth it. Two minutes. Is it a new story or is this an old one? I think They're every one ones. of these are old ones that have existed, but they just kind of take their own spin on it, right? There's some <laughs> comics out there. Black Adam comics? Oh, yeah. What's he going to okay. do? Is he going to win in the end? Do we know? And do you guys not just know all the answers to the movies we whenever you're watching the, these? We didn't read the comics. No, no but to those that did, Nick, yeah. for instance. Nick, I he, didn't read comics. But they they yes. grab like a little bit of each. So they'll grab like a story from one and another one. And then did you think Nick was together. a comic book guy? Loves fucking Captain America, this guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like the movies. <laughs> It's well, like uh, they like it's like adapting a movie from a book. Sure. Well, I've never read one. Either. A lot of so movies are, yeah. Most Lord of the Rings. What's your favorite book, AJ? Favorite book? Yeah. Well, I like the line in uh, Major League. He's sitting there reading Moby Dick, and he walks in. Oh, they made a book out of that. One of my favorite lines. <laughs> well, the book right. is always better than a you movie. You have to watch it. The book is always better than a movie. They say. I did. I've never really that. said that. Not you, but they People. say that. People will say that. When yeah. are they coming out with this movie? <laughs> oh, 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 question. It's my favorite book. Sun he died in what, 2017? Didn't Tom BC. Cruise make a movie about the art of war? Sun Tzu, The Art of War. That was a lot the chunk right. change edition, though. Yeah, exactly. I need a two to three Condense. minute video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Movie. It's like a half an episode of TV. And you know what I'm going to tell you? The book's better than the movie. Yeah. Whenever they do that. Always. Let's go to a page here and really become better. Wesley oh, Snipes has a movie called uh, The Art of War. But I don't think it was the Chump Change Edition, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sun Tzu, page four, dash 15, okay. dash 17. <laughs> According as circumstances are favorable, one should modify one's plans. Okay. Sun Tzu, page four, dash 18. All warfare is based on deception. Oh, I like that. Make the movie, somebody. Jeez. We're back in four with some phone calls. one 833 4 on the 5 Energy phone line. We cannot wait for that. We'll see you then. Get in in the same game parlay holiday Hell yeah. for the MLB. $5, same game parlay or same game parlay plus after you walked in at the top. Longest odds that hit win 50K in free bets. Okay. And then there's another 50,000 going out to a bunch of other people that win as well. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Here have a go. day. You're all compete for second place. <laughs> uh, See you in four minutes. Later. That's a big fucking Jesus. fire. We are in the back corner of that building that is at the bottom there. That smoke smells. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. The paint from that place, the utilities, the plastic. All the good mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. all just floating kind right of, into us. Yeah. The guy just came to the building. If the fire moves a little more this way, we have to evacuate. Fire. Yeah, it's got to be like the air conditioning units or something yeah. up there. It's currently under investigation right now. It did spread to the roof and to the air conditioning heating unit up on the roof. John John Robinson says, uh, Holy shit. Whoa. Holy fuck. Or did something like... What was the explosion, you think? Uh, they're, do they're doing a bunch of fire hydrants out there, so maybe the the top of the lid fell off? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, it was allowed. <laughs> That's not a thing from right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. they, they just put the fire out. Fire's out. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Oh, you forget all about that. You're like, eh, I could do that again. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we just lost power in the middle of one of the greatest promos in the history by pound for pound, number one fighter in the world, Kamar Usman. He literally just cut a promo about what it's like to walk to the ring. Some guys, they stay afraid and they, they, they just kind of get smaller and smaller. But as for, for guys like myself, as you get closer, this this alpha, this giant, this this lion, you know, this god-like figure per se starts to grow and grow and grow and grow. And then I, I they, they grease me up and then I step up there and then I pray for myself and then I pray for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I got like chills on this yeah. while he was talking yeah. about it. And right before he was about to kind of put a bow on it. The entire thing just shut down. There's a fire right next door. Let's assume they cut off all the electricity. We're fucked. Yep. Probably for the next few hours. That's good. Hey, boys, we handled it. Good show. Good show. Good show. Good show. The ticker's still kicking. Hey, let's uh, type something on the ticker. So, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so just go on your computer. Yeah, I'll type in the uh, show. Do you want me to email serious? Please do. Okay. Go on the phone. Who's going to do a letter? Yeah, because this part going to take a little bit. Oh, office. Yes. Bill. Yeah. This thing just froze. Oh, jeez. This is great. Oh, uh, he said the fire department just caught it. They have no idea how long. That was really good by Usman, too. All of the power in our office just went out. Unexpected, out of nowhere. This shit is getting real out here. Hope everybody's okay. Obviously, they got the fire contained, which is good news. But we apologize for the show ending abruptly out of nowhere. No injuries, I believe, is what's being reported. The fire was massive. We all had to huff like paint and shit from the fire right next to our studio. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. Cheers. I right, see you guys. All right. This is called the AJ Hawk in studio trick shot. Half court, let's go. Half court. If you make this, one person that retweets this will win. That seems to be everything. Zito's pick for the day at store.patmcafeeshow.com. Hell yeah. 15% off the For the Brand Dad Cat. Ooh, Ooh MBT. Love them hats. Zito, you are a constant wearer of this particular hat. Why do you enjoy this one more so than maybe others, Z? It's the comfiest hat we own. It's absolutely amazing. What is it, 47? Uh, no. Um, it's on the side right there. Yeah, these are 47. Uh, the ones that are This is an older one, though. Oh, gotcha. Oh. Anyways, they're good hats. Mm -hmm. Great hats. I wear these to golf in as well. Mm -hmm. Fits my big ass dome. Mm -hmm. AJ, this hat might fit your head. Yeah, no, I need to. Uh, I need to get a few of these ones. I, I always like when when Zeet has them on. Did you size up my head when you were in town on Friday? What do you mean? <laughs> you know. Is my head what size? It's a big head. Yeah, what size do you think? Your head to my head. Because this, you're zoomed in more than us on a daily basis. I didn't think about this because I have a very large head. I didn't know what it was in comparison to the largest. I do not have the largest head by any means. Yeah, I don't good. know it's what size uh, fitted hat I wear, though. Do you know what you wear? No, because I, do, I, I, don't, I can't wear fitted hats, really. They're not very comfortable for me. I always got to have Everything's that. stretch fit now that I like. Well, I, I do the dad hats, and that thing's all the way at the end. Mm -hmm. All the way at the very end. And it, I will judge people whenever I see them wearing a hat and they're walking off, and they got, like, it's on the third snap tie. I think you're, t like, on the third snap. Not that small. Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. Third snap. I'm like, geez, yeah. must be nice to be able to just Who's this fit. toddler? Yeah, <laughs> A little baby brain in there, huh? Okay. That's oh. awesome. Did you finish the gym plans yet or what? The Hawkeyes? Old buddy came by and, uh, and looked at the space a while ago. We're, yeah, we're, we're in the process. Hey, we're only got a few, I mean, like yeah. 50 some days or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty soon. It's, like, it's coming up. 
yeah, like 60 something. It's coming together. It's coming together very nicely. The place is going to be gorgeous. I had to pick out some paint this morning because we're doing a little nice. paint change. Ooh. Mm. That was impossible. You doing any like murals or graffiti walls or anything like that? Uh, we'll add that, I think, as we get in there. Like, I want to get in there first and then feel like, all right, what area mm -hmm. do we look at a lot? What area gets seen a lot? Can and we what... get a Picasso? Yes. The answer is no. What about in the bathroom? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. <laughs> well. <laughs> In the bathroom? There will be no testically painted ball, uh, paintings in the Thunderdome. Does that mean you, have to, okay. like, you fly him in yeah. and he has to get butt naked and paint yeah. the wall? Yeah, we're not doing that. No. But if we were, <laughs> we'd let him know that as you get older, Maybe testosterone the production <laughs> begins to naturally decrease in the body. True. For most men, it begins around the age of 30. AJ, how old are you? 38. Yikes. Yes. Oh, my God. Did you know that Yikes. testosterone production declines roughly 1% per year? Holy smokes. After the age of 30, so you're down about 8%. You're at about 92% of the testosterone you used to have, pal. You're soft now. Wow. Tell me, how, tell me how I can fix that. Well, our friends at Roman have a new supplement designed to support testosterone production. Ooh. Okay. Roman is now offering $15 off your first order and free two-day shipping at GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. That's GetRoman.com forward slash Pat for $15 off your first order plus free shipping. Make sure you click the link in the description. Okay. It's not what Gumpy's using, but he should be. That's right. Yeah, true. Definitely. We're going to see Gumpy go through a couple phases here if he's doing this, because I think there is like, there's the puff phase when mm -hmm. you first get into the mm -hmm. sandwiches. Sure. And then there's the afterwards where you reap all the benefit from it. So Gumpy's head might be larger in like a week or two than it will end up being on the screen for Hammered Down. This will not do any of that. No, no, no. No, no. no this is get not doing any up. of that stuff. This stuff is just lifting your team, more energy, a little bit better sex drive mm -hmm. Whoa. as you get older. Hey. And I think with what's in food now too, there's a lot of yeah, can't have it. testosterone suppressants going into your body yeah. without you even knowing it. Hate it most really. Really. That's what they're saying, preservatives and such like that. Mm -hmm. Down. not good. Do you know that AJ? Is that why you and Bobby just shoot each other up with testosterone every morning? Well, that's the scary thing. It, no matter what you're eating or drinking, it causes cancer. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've been around those people too. Oh, I don't eat, that causes cancer. Okay, what can I have? Well, that, this goes back to the conversation about live. It's like, well, you pick and choose some things that maybe your taste buds don't like to tell you. I meant to say this during that, honestly. That's what it made me think of it. It's real. It, but this other shit that's absolutely terrible, but you like, well, it's not as. It's different. You make room uh, for it. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. It is true, though. Everything is not black and white. We know that. There's, like, nuance to things, and you can't just say, oh, this is it. This, like, it's tough. Yeah, there's conversations to be had. The internet is having a conversation about our conversation about, you know, picking and choosing what we're pissed off about when it oh. comes money-wise, which is good. Yeah. That's good. That's what you want to do. Start the conversation. Good. Start the conversation. Well, not normally. No, no. Eh, that's what you like, hope for. Though. I don't like diving into those waters much, starting combos, because anytime it happens, I normally get a bus driven over me. I mean, this is you know Miles Garrett or Miles Teller and Rooster and Aaron's immunized. And, mm -hmm. But this is something that, like, surprisingly, like everyone has an opinion about it. Like, I, I, I kind of when this first all happened, it was just like, yeah, hey, you know, like some people are gonna be pissed, but whatever, it's gonna come and go. Like everyone either thinks these guys are the worst guys on the face of the earth, or they don't care. Like there really isn't. Like, and how that. are you? How are you learning about the people that think they're the worst people on earth? How are you? How are you uh, via Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who will and behold <laughs> has taken more money than Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau and Dustin Johnson combined? Probably combined. <laughs> yeah. From that, I mean, it's it's not good. What has happened? Don't like it. Hate it. Would like it to not happen. But also, let's not just only attack athletes mm. in this entire thing. This is a much broader conversation. Let's go to the fence. This is what uh, Kenny Beecham was talking about, by the way. I do feel like we got to kind of, and not just us, there's many other people, but I take a very, um, I don't want to say serious, but I guess pretty serious, I guess multiple definitions of the word. I, I take real pride in the fact that we are one of the only people that have a pretty large platform that are very much, hey, we are on the player side, and this is how it is. Like, this is how we are going to be. And there's people that attack me for that. You know, there's people that attack me and us for that. But it's been happening the opposite way for 50, 60 years at this point now. If any time you have sports media, it's been covered by people that weren't, and the agendas and narratives and everything like that. And by the way, you got to do what you got to do. I appreciate people that are in the sports media business, you do that. But I take a lot of pride in the fact that, you know, we will sit in here for – 
a three hour show and for an hour and 20 minutes say, can we stop maybe just attacking athletes? I don't think that has ever happened before. And I take a lot of pride in that, AJ. I do. I, I, I think it's a great thing. Now, we take a lot of pride in being on the athlete's side, but that doesn't mean we're always on the athlete's side. Like no, if we're not guys, blind. If guys mess up, we, we're honest about that too. But I think we, we like to take a beat at least before we freak out and say this guy's the worst person in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and maybe the reason why is uh, I was buried by sports media on a regular basis, and every time they opened their mouth, I thought to myself, you don't fucking have a clue about what I do for a living. And if I was to get on a microphone right now, I'd run a fucking circle around you and your profession. So why don't you? So then I got Twitter, and then I started doing it, and then mm -hmm. here we are. But anyways, hey, <laughs> do what you got to do out there. Yeah, that's right. We'll get it. Do what you got to do out there. Well, make sure you don't use anything that is backed by Saudi Arabia no. if you are going to be pissed off about this. Or story. anywhere else yeah. in the world that has done bad things. Which, I think if you go deep enough into history, it's going to be tough to find a place that hasn't. Yeah, looks like everybody did. Not that, I'm not, once again, we are not excusing any of this. We are no. just saying a lot of money that is a lot money is old money. And if you dig into the old money and old in general, a lot of terrible shit happening in the old days. I mean, that is just, mm -hmm. but now it's... How much time is long enough? How much time like, do you think is long enough to pass to where, hey, what the horrendous things that they have done, it's been enough time now we can accept their money. Like, is there like a time frame? Is that what people do? I don't know. I have no idea. Because there's something that happened in recent history there. With mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just wait until horrendous. some more money who's done some more heinous things have come in. So if people are there, it's like, well, shit, you're yeah, looking but if at me. Look at this fucking guy. Look where he's getting his money from. But if it's a product that needs to be used in day to day, people are just... Oh, yeah, they don't care. Oh, yeah, gosh. Well, well, what do you want me to do? Fucking change my whole life? What, am I not supposed to tweet like everybody else is doing? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know what I would feel like. People. Oh, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying yeah, it. Yeah, yo, you got to say it. He's going to say it. <laughs> so, like, when Elon it. was going to buy, when Elon was going to buy Twitter, the people that attacked him the loudest, right? Are the people that are probably the loudest right now about live live golf? You could assume. Definitely an overlap. And on Twitter, the platform that is Twitter is live golf. And that never came up at all. No. So how's that happen? What what the fuck? I, and I don't dabble in well, the Well, would rule. their argument though? Would their argument be this golf thing is 100% backed by the Saudi fund. Twitter has a portion of their money back. Is that their argument? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's just selective. That's all it is. People will selectively pick what they yeah. don't like and why they don't like it versus something that's probably very similar. But since they use it, they but don't But why do they got to act like they're, they're much, 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 much better humans than other people? I don't people love bringing out their soapbox. You know that. Yeah. Like... I'm happy we're not in the real it's world. It's good to be on a yeah. team, man. When you do that, you're on a team and people support you. Yeah. And there's another team you can fight against. And hey, here we are. I think that's the hot take thing that like uh, you and Kenny were just talking about. It's like when you have a hot take, you know that at least 50% of the people that hear it are going to want to get their soapbox out. I sound like an ignoramus, but I've learned more about this because sports have gotten involved now. Because yeah. live golf is the conversation. It's a sports world. So I've like kind of snooped around into it. And then once you start learning about, you know, where all the money is and all the things that have happened, it's like, wait a minute. I, I just, I get more confused about the world as the world continues to turn every single yeah. day. But I do believe in the hearts, humans are genuinely good people. Yeah. I think. Not 100% yeah. sure, but I think. Not everybody. Not all of them. Not everybody, which no. leads us no. back to the... Yeah. yeah. I mean, Ty knows as well as anybody. The, his hometown hero was not a great guy. Correct. Yeah, John Wayne Gacy True. was a bad guy. I've never disputed that. What Horrible do you mean? Guy. What did he create, though? You ate those? Yeah, uh, yeah the KFC chicken little. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. More of a double down guy. Hey, though. if, Pat, do you believe if, let's say, all these aliens that are swooping around... What if they decide, hey, we have a bunch of alien money. We're going to start our own golf league. Will people be pissed if they are funding that. it? That's when you, when you said Elon. That's what I was thinking. Now, here's the deal. What if on their particular planet, Yep. how will we research that? 
That's something that's to think not, about. That's just mm-hmm. blind faith. You just have to that's take right. their word for it. Well, oh, like kind of like back in the day here when people were just able to go one town over and nobody even knew they were a murderer in the other mm-hmm. town because nobody told anybody about anything. And I'm sure way back in the day where all these people, uh, not all these people, a lot of these people that are currently grandstanding, I'm sure they didn't just act like things didn't happen because nobody had the access to find out about it. Right? Those right? Those were, good old, no. Those were well, the good old days. That kind of goes back to what that UFC fighter was kind of promo on on Sunday about the short study war. Yeah, like, it's well, 2022. What the fuck? Yeah, like 50 years ago, it was a much different time. One human ago. Yeah. One generation ago, there was a lot of. Uh, it's insane. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Five Dan-o? Energy phone line. What's going on, that. Dano? Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are too it's young to listen to this show. I can tell through. I think. Well, how I'm old not you? Dan. I am Owen. Mitt. 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 Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am Mitt. Eight and a half. Oh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. If you're okay. telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> What's on your mom, Nick. pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is oh, and how Owen. you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports yes. and how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Love you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. I'm taking one. And also, fuck Boston. Oh! 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 You're the best. Oh! Oh! You're the best. I want to let Owen know. If you're still listening, Owen, Kiss you're you. inspiring. Best kid ever. Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. could do that. Is wow. That, Shout out, Owen. Me. That time. Go on. Yeah. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He was making me feel good, too, by the way. He was yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom, yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother, oh, Owen, eight yeah. and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome, Connecticut. It's about time they get a new, different generation, because the one right now that's about our age fucking stinks. Okay, well, Barry <laughs> Owen's dad. Uh, uh, Nick spoke too soon, just like Ty did about Billy Horsham. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he was being a little bit of a suck up, but he really turned it around there at the end. I did appreciate all the nice things he was saying because I am kind of taking it on shins on the internet for the conversation we had earlier. That was all factual, <laughs> but I mean, it is. You knew that when you were diving in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why. Yeah, that's why I had all the tweets in the drafts. I didn't want my Wednesday to become that. Yeah, and then I let off the show with it. So, you know, we're all picking and choosing good ideas and bad decisions. You know, there. Th- this morning I woke up. Did my standard scroll of the internet, Twitter. And the shit I seen getting posted by people. I mean, the the one guy rocking, like, showcasing that he has a Nike, like, plug in his thing. Wow, talking about how terrible. And I was just, I, I almost, I thought we fired up almost. Yeah. I was like, fucking... Who, who is it? Are these people that we would know? No. I didn't hear any of these people. I mean, literally, I've just dove into this world for the first time. I've never heard of them. Anybody. I haven't seen, like, the reaction stuff. I haven't paid it's enough attention. Everyone. I've been paying it, attention oh, yeah. to live, but not, like, how people are burying players. Well, you're not – they're not – I mean, they're burying the players because I think that is the command from the PGA for their partners. Hey, this is what our angle, the moral angle, is how we stop this because PGA has to have a counter, right? Yeah. PGA has to have a counter, and this is the counter. And I respect it, by the way. PGA has been around a long time. They're going to – they're going to have to do what they had to do. I guess years ago they went to Washington to yep. get some things mm-hmm. like some laws and lobby some stuff. Now it's this whole, but it's, I don't like the players getting buried in this entire thing. It's not their fault that somebody has come along with $200 million, $125 million. And PJ, if you don't like it, like compete. Here we go. Now you got to compete. Instead of the Corn Ferry Tour that you own, now you're going to have to compete. Let's see what they got. We're going to learn a lot about the PGA Tour over the next year or so. Yeah, it almost seems like a lot of people saw that picture of Phil with the leather jacket and they were like, all right, enough's enough. This fucking asshole's taking blood money. Spent $50 million on this leather jacket ensemble. Like, I, now, now I am going to say something. You know what? he was dressed was awesome hey with, without phil's Legend. comments would this be a would this be a bigger story yes pga would have people still pushing this i think they would yeah. but i'm saying Not would us. other people's i guess their views be a little different because everyone can point to phil like oh if they don't know about it they know hey phil did something said he supported some terrible stuff or whatever that's like i'm saying casual fans i don't know if it would be as yeah. big a deal those I are agree. the questions they asked like they asked louis Oosterhuizen, who's from south africa like, Woosterhuizen. uh Woosterhuizen, like if there was a uh like a genocide or something he going played on. during apartheid there it is yeah in south africa would you still play and he said ah, i can't answer hypotheticals 
Smart. I don't like hypotheticals either. Yeah. All right, AJ, let's say you were a good golfer. <laughs> All right, let's go to the phones. Let's go Sorry. to the Yeah, it's, yeah. Yes, I would. Not happening. At times, at times it can happen. You can put it a couple shots it's together. Golf. Hey, it's a roller coaster. Oh, hey, par, bogey, 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 triple, 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 quad, quad, quad. <laughs> that sounds like a figure skating routine. Love what you did there. You know what I mean? Triple quads. That, that's why Nathan Chen was able to win the yeah, gold. That's right. He had the quads over everybody else. And also that 15-year-old girl, girl in Russia was able to do the quads. Oh, and she was taking right. all the... Yeah, uh, she was on the trembling sandwiches. She was on all the trembling sandwiches. <laughs> Which, by the way, was not her decision. Fucked up, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That people yeah. were doing that to her. She was incredible on the ice. We she had was, no chance. Yeah. I was actually telling American kids, like Owen's friends that are girls... Do not skate. Yeah, Do no not point. ice skate. This girl's 12 years old, 13 years old. She's better than every adult that has ever been on the yeah. ice. Turns out, Jason. She was cheating, I guess. Yo, dumb. What what country? Still a good skater. Uh, Olympic athlete from Russia. Let's go to the front. The OARs. We say, oh, mm -hmm. you, you say, ah. Uh, uh, I say Russia uh, was the answer. Uh, okay. Russia. He yeah. was of a Russia. Uh, Let's go to Troy and which, what have they created? Well, what do people use? What are they doing right now? Wheat. Let alone what there's a wheat shortage. Create? Well, that's what I'm saying, what they're doing right yeah. now, but like just throughout, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stock up on bread. Trust me. Oh, you're talking about the wheat? Yeah, yeah there's a wheat. Wheat shortage. Wheat? Yeah, wheat. Ukraine and Russia. You're talking about white bread or wheat bread? Both bread? I bread. think wheat All bread. is used to you. What's going on with wheat? I thought we had wheat here. UK, Ukraine and Russia oh, no. are responsible for a lot of the wheat in the world. Uh -huh. Why? They Tetris. I can't eat bread no more. <laughs> what? They are. It's going to be tough. When did we stop just creating all... I thought this is what this land was for out here in the middle well, yeah, of... That, well, that's why Bill Gates is making all of our food now. Thank you, Bill. William because Gates. Because we're losing is, it, it sounds like. Bill Gates is making my food? Well, he's making... He's, you know, he has all the farmland, but then he's also, like, manufacturing, making food in Petri dishes. Oh, and then what? he has those pool parties to celebrate. Yeah, he's got like the fake meat. He's all, he's trying all that. Bologna? Let's go to the front. I don't know about the pool parties. I doubt he can do a gainer, but I guarantee I he, did he like can do a gainer. gainer. Yeah. Bill Gates, he's creating food and Petri dishes. He can do a, he can do a gainer. shooting star. Probably I'd pay a lot half. of money to see that. Fine square. I don't know. At this point, he might not be able to have it. But back in the day when they were having those ragers, he was yeah. off the roof probably. Yeah. A couple flips. And at, right before he jumped, he, was gonna, he, he actually said a couple times, I heard, I'm going to buy up all the farmland. <laughs> mm -hmm. Boom. I'm going to cure COVID. <laughs> Boom. And it was like, son of a bitch did it. Yeah. Called a shot. Problem Perfect. spotting them. Let's go to uh, Esteban in Florida. What's going on, Esteban? How you doing, guys? Um, I want to first applaud the parents of Owen. Yeah. Yes. That is a great set of parents to have there for Owen. Good call, applaud Esteban. Them. Good call. We never, we never congratulate the parents, only Owen. Yeah. So thank you for doing that for uh, all of us, Esteban. And, and I'm, try, I'm trying to do this real quick. Um, the the uh, the contract you got, the big money, you guys deserve it. You guys make my day every day. I'm a disabled veteran. I watch you guys every day. Thank you for I have some issues, and you guys easily make me feel good and happy and i laugh my ass off all the time aj much prop for your, your career even though it was green bay um oh. but i really 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 enjoy your show and you guys deserve everything you got and more so I'm esteban esteban i'll tell you what i don't know if anybody deserves the money that we made but i appreciate the hell out of you saying that which branch of the army or which branch of the military I, i'm sorry i was army uh, i was an mp Hua, we appreciate your service, man. Thank Love you so them. much. Uh, what's your team? No. You said you hate the Packers? No, no, I don't hate the Packers. I hate the Redskins. Oh, I'm sorry. The What are they? The, uh, commanders, commanders that's the bond. Oh, Commanders. Whatever. The schizophrenic should be their name. Um, I'm a Cowboys fan. Oh, oh. Esteban, hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, brother. Thank you so much for your yeah. service and for following along. Thank you very much. I, how do you, Real quick, how do you feel your your chances of making the cut on that AJ bet since these players are going to go to play live. Oh. You think that improves your chances of making the cut now? Thank you so much, Esteban. Wow. I haven't even thought about how this directly benefits me. Big time. Yes. So because all these people are taking these big checks, yep. I'm going to collect a massive one from this guy. This is amazing news. What a turn yeah. of events. Well, because none of our, I'm going to be playing against like Boston Connor. Yeah. It's going to be like the USFL. Yeah, it's going to be a joke. <laughs> oh, this is awesome, yeah. AJ. 
Yeah, it'll definitely. I mean, you're gar- guaranteed to actually get your tour card probably earlier than we thought, I would imagine, yeah. right? With these guys going over to live because I mean, there's no, like, I doubt you'd go get beat by a high, an average high school golfer, right? No, it's chance. not about right now, pal. Remember, this is a 30-year okay, We're going to be having this, hopefully, thing. hopefully we're going to be having this conversation about 19 years on here, and you're like, well... Hey, I still got some time. Here we go. Nobody's hoping for me to be on a microphone for 19 years, pal. Okay, I've been with me a long time. Everybody's going to get sick of this at some point. So that's I'm saying hopefully meaning like you're not dead and I'm not dead. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously death is quite, quite a thing. But if you die and I make the cut, I'm coming after Laura. So Oh, yeah. she knows, yeah. She knows. Okay, okay, good, mm-hmm. okay, good, good. But uh, anyways, after I'm done on this particular microphone and you guys go on and maybe do a show or whatever, I'm, I'm going to be on a course, AJ. Every day. Yeah, okay. Watch out for that knee. I know, oh. you know one one week into your training, that thing blew up. Knee's back, pal. Yeah. I was putting myself in a Kurt Angle ankle lock. Oh, yeah. And it was, you know, as I was golfing with Air Force Ones on cement and really going in there, I mean, I was trying to break my knee. My knee's so strong, it survived, and we're all the way back, AJ. Like that should be something you're scared of, not knocking right now. Hey, I am fully. I want you to be a great golfer. I think it's it's awesome. I think you come right from the pocket, as you like to say, on your swing. Thank you. Things will be okay. A lot of people judging my swing on the internet. Got like four hundred thousand views. I'm, I'm sure. Is everyone a coach? Well, I it's will like s- if you put a if you put a video of you deadlifting or anything. Yeah, of course you're gonna have a ton of people. Yeah, but I will say my my swing does appear to be trash <laughs> in slow motion. So <laughs> too. But I mean. If I'm making solid contact, yeah. who cares? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Feel versus real, much different. My my swing in my head, smoother than Billy Ho's. That's yeah. all that matters. Then you put that thing in slow mo, and I am real. I mean, that thing <laughs> is really going. But solid contact, all that matters. AJ, Chris Bad Dog Russo is going to be on the other side. He was on first take this morning. Anything to say to his listeners? No, I think we're good for today. Mad Dog always does great on Wednesdays, though. He does. Kevin Durant fucking buried him. Will he have an answer to that? Who knows? We'll be back in about 21 hours. You are the best. It's been an honor to penetrate your ears. That was, That's a good one. That was one of our better ones. Yeah. Because yeah. AJ was even in it. Mm-hmm. It was like a give and take. There wasn't a, well, don't you have a heart out? Yeah. <laughs> Not enough time. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You did that yesterday with Dana. It's like, why you got to embarrass us in front of Uncle Dana? I didn't say anything about a hard out in front of Dana. Sure no, you did. said, is Dana come on? It's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. We get it. Jeez. Now we look like assholes. Hard right. out. Thanks, hard on, prick. I never know what time anybody's coming on. Do you want us to, oh, I sh- we should send you a um, yes. shot. It. Yeah, we should. Send me the, actually, you know what? No, you don't. Con, con, can you send me that one sheet, actually? No, yeah, I'll screenshot it and text it to you. Yeah. Now, I will say, the last time I sent you a screenshot of it, you got the time wrong that was in the screenshot yeah. on the show. You said, I thought the person was coming on 205. Oh. It was like 225 mm-hmm. on the sheet that I sent you. You're 20 minutes off. So I always assume more information, actually less information in your particular case. Oh, no, I like more information. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like Your you performance doesn't. Though. Yeah, you fuck it up. Oh, okay, cool. Then don't send it to me. I can just free ball it out here. No, we could do is say, and I see a free ball out here. Two separate ones. So, like, it's like one smaller one, like, cut it in half almost. And say, hey, here's the times that things are happening. Yeah, might help yeah. your brain. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the time that I sent him yeah. sheet with times of mm-hmm. guess on. Yeah. You still botched it. Botched it completely. It was yeah. off 20 minutes. And I, was I don't like, recall that. I was like, oh, I must have. I mean, Jesus Christ. What is going on? There's a tornado. Oh. Uh, oh, that's going to be here tomorrow. Where we are? Tornado warning right here? Mm-hmm. What? Which one's, which one's worse, watch or warning? Warning. Warning's worse? Yes. So we're under a watch. Yeah, there's no warning. Warnings don't happen very often. Yeah, because uh, once they've warned you, it's... Yeah, yeah. It means one has been spotted in the air. Yep. What temperature are we at right now? It's, it's dropping. Fahrenheit? Today. 74. It's going, 74? It was, 80, it was 80 at noon or something like that, and then it's going down to like 73. That's why I wore pants today. Nice. I thought on the way what home, when I go outside, I'll be able to wear pants. Smart. Might be a little chilly. Well, Smart. I'm also no shorts, really, at the new house. I'm realizing uh, my uh, warm weather gear is limited. Uh. <laughs> and by that, I mean, obviously, tank every day, all day. What's going on down here? Mm-hmm. And I haven't been able to do cardio in, what, three weeks because of this thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about me just healing this thing myself? Pretty cool. Oh, Rehab it. Pretty okay. cool. What was the diagnosis on your injury? I just tweak a little something there, yeah. like you bite your cheek. Self-healed. 
tweak, Nate. Time body. heals all wounds. Boom. Does. Good job. Congrats, man. Thank you. Who said that, Gaga? I mean, Gandhi. yeah, look at you. Gandhi? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back, AJ. Be careful. Be careful. Ooh. I need to not hit golf balls full go on cement over here. Yes. Right. You need to have mat. a little bit of give on that thing, a little bit of turn on that thing. We got multiple mats. Can you stand on the one mat and hit off the other? Yeah. And I've also been taking off my shoes, so I got socks oh, on, mm -hmm. so the socks nice. will move. Those Air Force is too squeaky. Too exactly. Much. Too much grip. Yeah. That reminds me of And One. Those mm -hmm. commercials are so good. Mm -hmm. Let's finish up these phone calls and get the hell out of here. We've done enough talking for today. We talked about some real shit today. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Everything that's going on. Has my Did my first same game parlay hit in that first game? Tigers, uh, Pirates? Uh, what was your... <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Tigers just went up 2-1. Yes! Go. We did like that. Did Brera do anything? Miggy had an RBI. He did not hit a home run. Uh, I got him. I think get a hit. He needed two home runs. All right, here we go. Miggy is at. one for four with an RBI. Um, what is Mitch Keller doing? Yeah, it's not good. Mitch Keller is dealing. Yeah. He went. He went six. Uh, gave up one run. Yeah. Had seven strikeouts. Oh He's no. Hit. Pretty fishy day on the bump. This guy's <laughs> unbelievable. I was betting he would suck. Yeah, I jumped in there with you. He really sold me down the river there. It wasn't having... me. It was them. I didn't know that this guy fucking existed. That's was... the Pirates pitcher? Yeah. Yeah, the Tigers are like the worst hitting team in baseball. No, I know. That's why I was getting such good odds, but Pirates stink. And this guy just assumed oh, the it's a fact that this guy stinks. 19th best uh, record in the MLB. Who Not cares? Bad. I wish they were the worst so they would fucking have to sell. That's what I hope. I, I, well, I do not like I the Pirates. I got news for you. Them being 19th or them being 30th record-wise, neither is going to fucking make them sell. You're right. Zambelli's still going to sell tickets to PNC. Yeah. yeah. There's Every going to be a bobblehead. There's going to be shame. some Shame. I don't like notes. it. But Everyone else pretty – two Yankees' best players, former Pirates. True. All right. Really? How so, for the Yankee game, this is what I got. Mm -hmm. This is what I got for the Yankee game, AJ. Plus 119,000. Okay? Yankees' money line. Mm-hmm. Who are they playing? Twins. They've won seven in a row. Nestor Cortez on the mound. The Twins have or no, Yankees? No, the Yankees have won seven in a row. We love – us Yankees love streaks. John Sheeran said it to us uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Head odds maker. Aaron Judge is going to hit two home runs today. Ooh. Yes. He might. <laughs> two. This, this son of a bitch is the MVP right now. He hits a homer damn near every night. Chris Archer does yeah. stink. Anthony Rizzo is going to record a hit. Okay. Good chance. Love Rizzo. Gary Sanchez is going to record a hit. Okay. He might. Former Absolutely. Yankee. Absolutely. New York Yankees will win the first five. Okay. Mm -hmm. There'll be a tie after the first inning. Okay. Ooh. Minnesota Twins take the lead after the second inning. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> and then by the fourth <laughs> inning, Yankees are back. Yes. <laughs> and Joey Gallo going to get a hit. Uh, that might be the tough one. So tie oh. after the first inning. Definitely possible. Twins, Twins after the second inning. Mm -hmm. Yankees after the fourth, all the way through. Mm -hmm. Possible. Yeah, yes. In the fourth, Judge hits a home run. Joey Gallo, no chance of him recording a hit. That every time I've said it to a Yankee fan or a gambler, like, "Ooh, that Joey Gallo one's going to get you." Not tie after the first inning, Twins after the second inning. <laughs> Not that one. That Yankees one, that one after might be the tough too. That's the other <laughs> tough one. But yeah, one hundred nineteen. It's 000. possible. Hey, anything's possible. Go. It's unbelievable. Oh, the Owen tweet's doing well on the internet. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> fucking Aristotle and Owen dunking on Connor. I wish we had camera on that diner in Orlando or in Tampa Bay when Aristotle dunked on Connor. That was what it was like, but face to face in a very snotty fashion. Yeah. Connor, thank you for your services. Anytime. I'm glad Connecticut's kind of turned the page on being bitch made cats, but also I've never <laughs> even worn that Aristotle hat since that happened. Yeah. And he had a Yankees jersey. So on. he beat you. Oh, yeah. 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 He, he, but at the end of the day, Red Sox knocked the Yankees out of the playoffs last did. year. So it was kind of like a. Oh, Aristotle had a bad night. Yeah. Got you back. Oh, Connor had just bought that hat, though. It was yeah. feeling so Same good. Day. And this Loved kid it. just. Ethered him into the ground, and he's. He, I think he left the hat in yeah. the booth. So the hat gets buried. <laughs> Never worn it again. With Aristotle's shovel. Uh huh. Then that sweatshirt jacket thing you loved in LA. Loved. Oh, loved. Oh. Loved. Gone literally the next morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Adrian Pearson walks up and goes, 
Besides that jacket. <laughs> cool jacket. I like that jacket. Oh, that jacket looks like it'll fit me. Yeah. Those are hilarious lines that are said in locker rooms, and people, you know, you either know how to respond or you don't. Mm-hmm. And Connor goes, yeah, you want it? You want it? <laughs> All right, take it. And then he puts it on, takes it off. Doesn't even put his arms through. Does gives it to a manager. <laughs> yep. He's never seen that thing. Throw that no. thing in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. It's in the back of somebody's car. He had 295 yards in one game before the NFL was going through, like, uh, on their Instagram. Is Omar running uh, the check down and mm. at NFL? Sports see. Center Omar? Like a little check I don't the know. bio. His yeah. hat will be in there if he is. NFL throwback always crushes. That's my favorite NFL account, I think. What's his um, account? It'll be Omar. Right on Omar. Even on Twitter? No, no, no. We're Just talking IG. about Instagram. Uh, I don't fuck with it. Who was Omar? He runs Sports Center. He started a House of Highlights. Oh yeah, talented interneter, good clipper, great clipper. Huge House of Highlights. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Now he's at Sports Center full time. I think he runs Sports Center in- Instagram. Definitely. Uh, but it feels like the check down and at NFL are starting to dabble into Omar's world. It feels like a, maybe it legitimately might be an Omar. Disciple, and, uh, yeah. protege that yeah. is running them now. Yeah, I assume they probably are taking the Omar blueprint. A lot of those accounts. Yeah, all of them are. Yeah, that blueprint stinks. Tony, Tony, what do you mean? One of them is good, don't you think? I think like one of them is good. Like I think Omar is very good at what he does at Sports Center, but everybody trying to emulate that, I think, is it becomes a little bit too much, and I have to unfollow people that I don't want to unfollow. It's oh. like, why are you doing this to my thing? Good run, you know. I see the same clip on six different accounts. Mm-hmm. This is wild. That's crazy. Yo. Mm-hmm. Exactly. With the mind blowing emoji. Bruh. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, all right, all right, all right. Everybody can go to Reddit and find these things. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Tim in Indianapolis. What's going on, Tim? Tim. Your Excellency, how's it doing today? Oh, Jesus. Nice. Hey, this. listen, we can't start that just yet, Tim. Let's give it at least a week. It's in a little okay. bit of heat uh, right bad, now. Bad, thank you. Bad. Thank you. What do you want to talk about, pal? <laughs> my bad. today. Well, two quick things. One, uh, just to give you a little background, uh, Black Adam is in the Shazam, so the Zachary Levi. If you saw that one, I know you probably didn't. Shaq? In that world. No, that's Kazam. Kazam. No, that's Kazam. Shazam is uh, uh, first, first kid. the app. It's Kurt Warner. It's first also kid. the app. What song Kurt is Warner playing guy. Right Yeah, now? Zachary Levi. Is Black Adam Anyways, going to be singing songs in this thing, and Shazam's coming out f- telling him the song? Not cool. the first kid actor? I mean, I'd watch it. That's Sinbad, and no, that's uh, yeah. never made that movie. Yeah, it's Mandela not, not a, effect. Yeah, yeah. we're getting down movie. to the wormhole. Richie Rich. Well, Blank Check was the shit. Oh I mean, yeah, we're gonna really get into yeah. old movies. Mandela he was from his in master first bedroom. kid. <laughs> Nelson Mandela. What the Invictus? Mandela effect? Mandela. Modelo. Modelo. What? We miss you, Gumpy. Sorry about this, Tim. This is why our show stinks. I mean, honestly, we can't take anything. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but Black Adam is going to be the best movie of all time. Hell yeah. Uh, we'll see. But no, my real question is with that New York that Times mean? article, it like seemed like they were trying to bury the Texans a little bit. Um, mm. Don't most NFL teams make outside services sign NDAs when they come in to work with players and teams? Interesting question, Tim. I'm not 100% sure. I did see that the... Houston Texans allegedly gave Deshaun Watson NDAs to utilize. Uh, Bleacher Report reported that the New York Times reported that via their investigation, Deshaun Watson met a minimum of 66 women for massages over the course of 17 months. The Texans gave him access to hotel rooms for massage appointments and provided him with non-disclosure agreements per Jenny Varentes, who has done the entire the New York Times article, I believe. She was the one that did all the investigating. The Texans supplying hotel rooms, fascinating. I don't I didn't read that. I don't know that. The NDA thing, I guess. So every NFL team has some sort of retired big wig cop, federal agent, secret service, somebody uh, that is overseeing their security and off the field stuff. So if you Let's say you get your accounts hacked or let's say there is somebody showing up at your house or there's some like there's always somebody in an NFL program that you are to go to. And then they know the people to get a hold of and kind of take care of the whole situation. I never I was very lucky. I never had to do it. I've seen teammates, though, that have had either 
something take place where it was a message or a letter or something hacked or stolen or a situation arise and they go and then that person knows somebody and they take care of it. The way this one read was that the Secret Service member, who former Secret Service member who is now the head of the Houston Texans security, like handed him NDAs to use. It was like in his locker the next day or something after they helped set up a like I guess what the hotel rooms for it. It was that was the weird thing. Yeah, I don't I don't know how and if Deshaun nor the Texans spoke to Jenny, I don't know how you would find out what happened on that end. So I'm not the fact that the Texans, I guess, gave it to him would be weird. Like NDAs, I don't know. Like lawyers should people use NDAs for whatever. Like if someone, let's say, I don't know, Tom Brady has someone clean his house. I would imagine he probably has that person sign an NDA. That's normal, I think, when it's big time, high profile people and people are around their family or whatever it may be. But the fact that the team is involved, that's what makes it weird. I think. Yeah, and it because normally you'd go to like I think your lawyers or. Well, yeah. But like with like Freeney, the guys in Geese who were helping Freeney and his ankle who were in the building, wouldn't they also have to? Because if they saw like a play or something and then they told mm, the other I don't team. know. I, I was not a part of seeing the Geese sign an NDA. I think it's going to be tough to get those guy, guys in Geese to sign anything. <laughs> they know their signature is worth. They usually don't come in like, so but much. did they come in and treat him in the Colts facility? Uh, it was in our hotel. Yeah, but not like in the training room. I think it was in the hallway. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's – at least in Green Bay, like, there wasn't – outside people didn't come in and treat us that weren't affiliated with the Packers. That didn't happen in our training room at the Colts either. That was at the Super Bowl in a hotel when we're down there. So, yeah. in the Colts training facility. I'm not sure mm-hmm. how often an NDA is just out there. That was set up by Dwight, though, not by the Colts, right? Uh, yes. And I wonder, like, if Deshaun asked them for a copy of what an NDA looks like, you know, and they give it to – because they feel – they have, they could have had no – maybe – they knew this was going on, but I don't think any of us could have expected a starting quarterback in the NFL to do like them acting like the Texans were trying to help him in this entire thing in the article, which by the way, she has done a lot more research than any of us, but just as somebody that's been in a building, that would have been, I think that would have been tough to happen. Yeah. Follow up. Why do you want to be traded from them? I mean, I don't know. I have no clue. You know, like I don't, so I guess there's if and no, is it normal? Like I don't know. Someone would have to tell us. Is it common for people to get NDAs, uh, like when they get a massage, to have the masseuse sign it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I've either. never heard of it, but who knows? Me neither. Well, I feel like too. In a lot of situations, you're not getting sixty six different masseuses. Like you have your one. It's alleged, by the way. Allegedly, we, we sure. Don't, we, this is how do probably, they find that number? How do they? How does anyone know? I think she did a lot of investigating. Like, yeah. Jenny like was, how would Deshaun know? Like, I guess they could go through all of his phone records, right? That's the only way. This, I mean, this started so long ago that an article like this, it feels like probably the beginning of it was probably like last year, this time, or even longer. It had to be so much investigation. So yeah. much. But if nobody from Deshaun's team or Houston talked to her, I don't know how they would know why or how he got the NDA from the Texans. Would Because there's an easy way to... Could have talked to one of the accusers that it was presented in the NDA, I'm guessing, yeah, right? Had yeah, had a but, copy of it. But alluding that the Texans were knew oh. what was going on and gave him because of that. Like, that's yeah. a big that's a big accusation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he could have very easily said, hey, what does a copy of an NDA look like? Like, just saying, like, oh, can you... Because remember, I think we all thought Deshaun was like... And then the way he talked in that press conference was like, my mama, I was raised by my mama, my grandmama. Like, I... like He I, told the team about some Instagram posts and this is from his deposition and after he told them about talking to some folks on Instagram they arrived and presented him the NDA huh. what is that what was the conversation on Instagram about oh. massages well and to your point like him saying that stuff also when the criminal jury didn't indict him when we heard that they would indict a ham sandwich it was like oh okay then that is also another thing that kind of led us down the path that maybe this wasn't completely him. And then it feels like the last two weeks has been a complete turn. Yeah, I have. I feel like I am very much a let's, uh, you know, everything's alleged, everything's alleged, everything's alleged because I've seen with close friends of mine, teammates of mine, other guys on other teams, things happen in the past where it's alleged, it turns out not being the case, or, or it is alleged and it turns out being worse than what was being alleged. I mean, there is so much that can happen. So I've tried to remain as. 
you know, because these are very serious every single time. We would like justice to be served to the maximum degree. If because these are terrible things that are being accused. If he did it, we would like maximum punishment. If he didn't, also would like that to be covered if that potentially happens. And then the non-indictments happen, two of them. It's mm -hmm. like, well, okay, so maybe the alleged thing is is just that. But for me, it's been hard over these last couple of weeks, especially with the New York Times and the clips yeah. and, uh, that have been pulled out. It's hard not to be like, this dude's preying on people, man. Like, hey, this is not good for the NFL at all. It's hard not to think like that. Even though they are allegations, it's terrible for the league and everybody that's ever played in it. Oh, it's, it's awful. The whole situation, I think, I mean, this is the first time I feel like they're dealing with something like this. Such a unique deal. It's just the massive, it's the number of accusations I think that people struggle with. Like that many people coming together, all saying something. Who knows what the truth is, but when there's 20-something, 20 20-plus, 20 people are like, all right, like, I don't know, this is weird. Seems to be a trend here. Unless yeah. this is the most elaborate rouge in the history of this sort of thing. There seems to be quite a trend happening. The well, hotel as well. It seems like the team had a uh, standing room at the hotel. It wasn't in Deshaun's name. It was in a team trainer's name. So he would go use that space at the hotel. It was like reserved for a team. Yeah, but he might he might use that person's name to get a room and not use his name. You know? Like, we don't know why or how. We don't know if the team just had this room. He might why would the team have the room there? Like a that's city, what I'm saying. Even right? if, it's, it, if it was for mold, is it for anyone on the team to use? Like, they would never, why would they, liability-wise, why would they do that? But I know a lot of humans who have stayed in hotel rooms not under their names, believe it well, or not. Well, yeah, they put them in fake names when the team's on the road, too. All, yeah, but not just and when you're with the team. Like, I know a lot of guys, whenever they're traveling personally, yeah. they are in completely different names. So maybe this could be... Now, what I'm saying, though, is just accusing the team of being a part of this is a massive ac Huge. alleged. This is a massive accusation. Big deal. Massive deal. But this all could be just Deshaun, who we're learning a lot about, kind of, you know, manipulating everything. Could he be. said in a uh, deposition that he did not think the team was aware of the massage appointments at the hotel. He said, quote, unquote, not that I know of. So, so why was the room there? So if the team, well, then maybe it just, yeah. The team didn't set the room up with the trainer. He could have very easily just set it up under that yeah. person's name, right? Though, yeah, or asked him. Like, couldn't he ask him? Why would he, he want the team? He to know? You think the te he wants the team to know that he's getting sixty-six massages. Verbatim from the article, Watson acknowledged in a deposition that the Texans arranged for him to have a quote-unquote place at the Houstonian. That's the hotel. He used the fitness club. He dined there and also set up massages in the hotel rooms. They weren't aware of the massage appointments at the hotel, quote unquote, that I know of. Watson said. Ah, oh. uh, probably for family and people coming in town for games. I guess that. So he probably I negotiated that, that, by the way, yeah, into his deal. his deal. I'd assume that was part of a negotiation into his deal. And if we know anything about his representation, I mean, they're going to get good deals. Mm -hmm. But I, I just think if the Texans were in this, that's a hey. Makes it worse. Is this bigger. the first time? This the first accusations that the Texans were kind of at least had somewhat some kind of knowledge. It sounds like it, right? I don't know. I don't to think my knowledge, yeah. Know. yeah, this is the first time a team's been like implicated in any fashion. Hmm. Well, and like this is going on with them, and then you look at what ha what's going on with Gruden. Like it feels like they're you know the Texans aren't going to be the only team. It feels like a lot of stuff is going to come out but about from the that, Gruden and shit. And then Snyder and Roger Snyder. Goodell are in the House Oversight yep. Committee. There's definitely going to be questions about Deshaun Watson to Roger Goodell when he's in there answering questions at the House Oversight Committee. How can you not? Sounds like the Texans have a lot of plausible deniability, though, uh -huh. don't they? Like, I don't think, and with the way that relationship ended, like, I, I don't think they're going to be going down with Deshaun. You know, it's like, it, from yeah. that, it sounds like they weren't necessarily, or at least they d didn't necessarily know what was going on. So it's like, how. Well, you know what my crazy thing is? He slept soundly after all of this, it sounds like. If this happened, allegedly, this did he just think he was un like I don't know. Untouchable. Goes from being, you know, the king of the Even going about his life. business now has gotta be just weird, awkward. I mean, he obviously is out and about in Cleveland, has to probably goes to the gas station, goes to the store. Like I would I don't know. Like how was that? What's it like when he goes out in Cleveland? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I say fuck you to somebody, like it'll keep me up at night thinking about it. like uh, man, that was a little rude. That's probably gonna ruin our career here. Probably gonna take quite a hit here for this, even though that person deserved it. Like Ant Slant, after I chewed out Ant Slant, you know we got to learn a little bit about nineteen-year-old fraud, theft, mm -hmm. thief, 
but he'll be better from this and go on. He's an incredible hustler, a great worker. He'll be able to make it. But at night, I thought about that for a long time. I was like, probably too hard on Anselm. Probably too hard on that guy. But like that kept me up. I couldn't even imagine 66 different situations in 17 months that you just, you know what had happened in there. And then just be like, yeah, well, fuck it, that's life. I'm going to throw some footballs around. I don't understand how you do it. I, I don't under, I, That's crazy to me. That's another step of like, hey, this human potentially is a... Big time narcissist. Big, 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 big. It's all alleged, though. We got to remember that. And when will we know the truth, AJ? I have no idea. I well, mean, I think you can kind of make connection if he gets suspended for a full year in July. I mean, it sounds like that's that what's coming. Yeah, it and sounds I think like a year suspension. That's kind time. of the, that's the death blow, right? I mean, it's like it Strap almost seems up, like Baker. Well, wow. he's been excused he uh, from the Browns' mandatory minicamp. Baker Mayfield has been excused, and Brady Quinn had a <laughs> question of how you were wording that particular tweet. Was he excused or exiled? Oh, oh. Brady Quinn says to Tanny. Grassi, Paisan, who covers the Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield is not at mandatory minicamp in Cleveland. Jimmy G is not at mandatory minicamp in San Francisco. Kenny Moore is not at mandatory minicamp in Indianapolis, Indiana. We will keep an eye on those situations. Darius Leonard and I chit-chatted about uh, the surgery that he had on his back just yesterday, and obviously the immediate reaction upon learning about it live on air is one of, oh no, mm -hmm. this guy has a back surgery. He's the best player on our team. Might be one of the best players in the entire NFL. Not might be, one of the best players in the entire NFL. This guy's an absolute dog. dog. And he had an ankle injury, and then now he's getting back surgery, and they said he'll be back by the regular season. You almost, I almost, I mean, you almost saw me puke on air. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. oh no, this is not good. Everything's supposed to go much differently. Then he tweeted me and said, it's great news, honestly, bro. Give me a call. And I'll give you the info on it. I chatted with him after the, or afterwards. So I believe what had happened was, you see, he had a ankle functioning issue, not injury issue, ankle functioning issue that had been lingering and they could not figure out what it was. So they did an ankle surgery. They thought it was an ankle problem. Turns out they learned and found out through scans and tests and multiple different eyes and doctors, he had a nerve in his back that was somehow pinched or infringing upon it that was affecting his ankle. So the reason why this is good news is because they found out what the fuck was going on with his ankle. So this surgery should actually make him a much better athlete, better player, and his body better on the other side of it. Now, there's no such thing as minor neck or minor back surgery. Like, surgery is a big deal, especially whenever you're talking about a very vital part of the body that is you know, crucial to tackling and everything that Darius Leonard does. But he said his body's feeling better than ever. The surgery, he'll be back better than ever. And uh, this is a good thing, not a bad thing, because they're finding, they finally found out what the hell was the problem for uh, like a year and a half now or so. So, I mean, I think you and everybody else should feel a lot better about this whole situation. That Not only, yeah, man, that's, that had to be annoying for him and frustrating throughout the whole process, not figuring out, hey, what is, what's going on here? Why is my ankle not feeling better? What's happening? And then all of a sudden, it's probably freed him up. He probably feels like a new person. Yeah, it wasn't an in they, they I was told it wasn't like a pain thing. It was a function thing. It was like a, he couldn't really, it was. Yeah. You can get like drop foot and stuff. I know that. Yeah, it was like Achilles. I, I tried to ask like, like how when Achilles goes, like you can't control it. He's like, yeah, basically like couldn't control the the foot or whatever Damn. through his ankle. So, I mean, that was, he almost won defense player of the year with that. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. Insane. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, let's go ahead and uh, Colts are all the way back. Yeah. You fucking scared? You should be. Nope. You scared? You should be. Nope. Lions nope. stink. Who cares? Oh. So do the Bears. The Packers. We'll see you down the road. Yeah, we will see you down the road. Oh, you will. Oh, no. All right, we're out of here. What a show. What a day. This place got range. We're deep. Uh, Hammer Don <laughs> will come on after this at YouTube.com forward slash Hammer Don. Make sure you get into our 50K yep. same game parlay holiday oh, yeah. where hundred thousand dollars in free bets will be given out but fifty thousand in free bets will be given to one winner yep. named pat mcafee well, well i don't think yep i don't, think that's I don't know aj Congrats. Any, any final thoughts on this day aj you'll be able to get in on the january 2nd one yeah 
Yeah, once uh, January 2nd hits and I am uh, able to be on FanDuel, it'll be fun because you won't have a chance in these uh, same game parlays. Parlays kind of are my specialty, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, good luck. You might be able to win the next one. I'm winning this one. Good luck to everybody for second place. Talking to you, Ty. Good luck. Hope you enjoyed it. You watch all that baseball. You guys studied all those lines. Uh You had that entire page of notes, Tone Mm Diggs. Look at that thing. That's the amount of research this guy did for this parlay. I haven't seen one swing of the bat, <laughs> one crack of the baseball. Or that means you'll have an advantage over me. Bingo. I don't know who any of these people are that I'm betting on. But Joey Gallo needs to fucking do this thing. Good luck. Is Joey Gallo the impractical joker? Yeah, Basically, Joe Gallo. He yeah. fucking stinks. Whoa. I honestly would maybe rather have Joe, that Joe Gallo or Gatto or whatever the fuck his name is in the outfield for the Yankees than Joey Gallo. But, hey, he might get a With hit those today. crazy eyes? Crazy He'll Joe Gallo was a gangster. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. He, he get a hit. He has a lot of hits. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> get it? Uh, talk about killing people. All right. Which is how the <laughs> show started. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And I guess Here how the are. show went. That's right. Let's just make sure that whenever we're attacking people, it's not just sports people. Mm-hmm. This is just like when Notre Dame won that football game over Clemson and the football fans charged the field. It was a... Massive conversation. Look at the athletics. Look at the sports idiots. Mm-hmm. They don't care about anything. At that exact time, exact day, there was multiple gatherings mm-hmm. for, I don't recall the exact thing, with hundreds of thousands of people around each other. Praise heralded. This is awesome. Notre Dame football fans go on the field. These guys are going to kill the world. I just don't like that sports are always the thing that are attacked when everybody else seems to be doing the same thing. I don't appreciate it. I enjoy sports. I think it's a nice getaway. Mm-hmm. And there is going to be some shit that people don't love going forward. Let's go ahead and do our best to get rid of it. All right, here we go. All right, AJ. Yeah, way to close it out. It makes Someone's got to stand up for the athletes, right? Yeah, well, it's just, I don't, <laughs> I mean, then somebody's going to attack us for even saying, oh, yeah, the athletes got so hard play a kid's game, get paid all the money. It's like, well, there's no reason for them not to be treated like humans, though. Kenny Beecham was awesome. Andrew Brandt was fantastic. He gave me a lot Yep. Of Arsenal for the future, salary caps, a Fugazi conversation. Billy Ho, amazing from the fishing mm-hmm. boat. We appreciate the hell out of him. And all of you, we will see you manana. Winner Wednesday, did we make the announcements? Did yes, we put them out? Up yes, there. sir. Okay, sweet. Congrats, everybody. We'll have more giveaways. I hope you win next time. If you did not, if you did win, congrats. Enjoy the hell out of it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.